questions before the break? Uh, maybe I'll start with a question related to the to the grid shell form finding because the uh, it, it's really interesting this method that you did that you're actually using the displacement to form find. Uh, what I've seen so far is that they're using other relaxation methods, would it be handmade or kangaroo or whatever, and then they are trying to calculate the displacement on the relaxed. Uh, form. How do you compare both methods? Doing the both and uh, superposing, <laughs> because the both uh, it's 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 pointed as uh, work in progress. Yet the solvers with dynamic dynamic relaxation on Caramba. But I I I, I am testing. It's it's very nice. But it's low. It's low. It costs a uh, uh, process time, processing time, computer. But the response it's better. Better in 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 which sense that when the design ratios or the the bending moments it's almost zero. Okay. Uh, but to investigate. The system is not good because it, 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 it's, it's heavy. Uh, the computational time, it's, it's less long. So I think, I'm thinking now that uh, we can use the simplified approach to, to have, it's very close, okay? To have a, a, a gross response. And in the next step of, on the design, you use uh, this, this heavy one that uh, uh, can uh, offer to you uh, a shape that it's better, it's more efficient. It, it, uh, this will result a less material use thin uh, plates uh, or, or, or small cross sections, dimensions, and go forward. OK. I have a question regarding the wind forces in the example. Are you applying um, it to the whole facade or just in the beam columns lab? Uh, traditionally, in structural design, we, we in, in frames like that, we, we apply wind forces on the on the nodes between column and beams that is located on the facade. The value, the value. Uh, um, is the is the question I guess because you have to 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 calculate the 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 value from the situation of the construction uh, where it will, will be constructed the dimensions uh, and you have the the value of the load acting on the surface of facade so you can transform this distributed load in this point load by uh, influence area, OK? So you can uh, do an automation, this calculation of the value of load also from the, 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 the design codes. For the grid shell, it's more complicated to automate this. So I guess the, 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 uh, we can also hunting with a cat, like we, we, say, we say here. Uh, that's what. Do firstly, in a simplified way, get the gross response. And that's OK. This, this is the shape. This is the, my design, and you 
go to the next step with more accurate procedures. Like what? Like get in this shape that you have decided that it will be this is it and put it in a CFD to get the distribution of force in the magnitude. And you go back to Caramba, for example, and apply these forces and get a more accurate responses and do the design. And you can loop on the cross section in this, in this step. Do you see? Okay. Uh, so do you think having Caramba only as a structural design tool is not enough? You still need sophistic uh, answers or whatever other softwares to complement it or? Yes, uh, Caramba has a limitation that uh, doesn't model solid geometries. Like uh, some types of connections. Uh, solid connections, foundations, Karamba doesn't model it. So uh, more advanced uh, 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 complexities, structural complexity or, or, or geometry, you have to use ANSYS, for example, or Sophistic. The problem is that um, to do an automation or close the feedback loop, you have to be... Uh, uh, an astronaut, almost. <laughs> no, it's just kidding. Uh, you have to, 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 to. It, 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 you can do this. Uh, in nurses, I, I never saw uh, just in papers, but I know people that can uh, uh, bring uh, Autodesk robot, for example, uh, interacting with Grasshopper. Uh, Autodesk Rod, for example, model uh, solid. Do you understand? So, uh, and programming C plus plus, I guess, or C sharp. I don't know. I don't remember because I don't. I don't. I don't code in, in C, but in Python, yes. But you can enter behind the the, the screen uh, behind the RAM memory and processing. You can enter there and uh, access how to make these tools, these programs like Autodesk Robot, uh, Softstick, and Nances to make the feedback loop that for me is one of the most advantages of Caramba because you can consider it on the the design process to do optioneering, to do uh, a multi-objective op optimization. For example, optimizing the structure and the photovoltaics level of energy in the form fine. So you 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 search in the, the shape to maximize the photovoltaics and minimize the material of the structure, for example. You, to, do, to do this, you have to close this loop in the model because it's a parametric model in, op, in, in the, uh, optimization. Yes? But uh, 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 it depends. It depends of the situation. It depends of the design. I see. Thanks. Uh, no more else. I have a question. Um, when you have the, the lines, when you're creating your structure and the um, the cross section, it's made from the um, center of their of, um you you use your line as a center of the cross section the, usually the line the geometry that it has the axis of the bar is located on the centroid of the cross section 
the theory is like that. Mm -hmm. like But that. you can uh, use an eccentricity. And I did it on the vertical frame because traditionally the sled uh, mm -hmm. is on the mid-height of the cross-section of the beam. And you don't construct like that usually. Mm -hmm. You do this. And what is the difference? Because when you model this, this lab helps the beam stiffness. And the beam is helps also the lab. So the displacement, the maximum displacement is, is less. And you can uh, do a, a more tuned design on this. But you, ha you have to configure it in the, in the Caramba uh, plugin, like in, in the... Um, component. In the component, yes. Yes. Uh, uh, take a look. I, I, I didn't send to you yet, but I do uh, now in the break. Mm -hmm. I will send for you all this code so you can actually understand the, the minor details. So the second part of, of, of today is, do you understand all? So I sent to you these two cases and the, the beam, but because it's not too to complex, but I, I will send also. So you can test these two cases uh, and we can discuss in the second part because tomorrow is on, on yours. You can uh, 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 choose a project to develop and I will help you to develop it. And, uh, and uh, in, at the end, uh, we, you can discuss and uh, uh, learn uh, each other. Okay? So we can uh, make uh, the, 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 the break now if you don't have more questions, if you like, and return uh, uh, 10 minutes before 10 here in Brazil. 10 minutes before we start the schedule, which is scheduled to, to break, but you, you, you say, you say so. Questions? So far? Someone here uh, actually uh, already use the caramba? I tried to, but it's quite complicated, right? <laughs> the no, the beginning not. is hard. Mm. It's not actually complicated, but as I said, the most complicated is understanding about structural modeling. Okay? Try to focus uh, on this understanding. Uh, which questions uh, you might have because I can ex uh, explain it and, and, and help to solve these questions. So you can use and uh, in, in various situations without this problem. Because the problem is, is very, it is more difficult to construct geo, uh, structures with hinges because tend to be unstable. This is the more, more often problem that uh, uh, students came to me. It's not working, everything. It's unstable. It's, it's a hypo. Uh, it, it doesn't have equilibrium. 
Okay. Questions? And for, uh, for now, it's okay, it's difficult. How, how was this, this lecture? Say to me. <laughs> I wanted to know if you actually give trainings in Portuguese, because uh, I'm honestly, what I'm having a hard time here is I, I do have a, a good English, a good understanding of English, but um, the, the, the more technical terms for engineering, like I already have a hard time understanding in Portuguese engineering since I have a architecture background. So uh, trying to do it in another language is even harder. <laughs> yes, I don't know, uh, maybe. Uh, I, I, I don't have the uh, plan to do it, but maybe. Yeah. Uh, maybe if the artificial intelligence do a, a closed caption of my, sure. Uh, in the uh, I can suggest that uh, because it will be published these videos, and we can think about uh, publish with uh, captions. Okay, hey, thanks. What more else? Any specific questions can be also, we can um, come back to the codes and see, or we can stop now. I sent to you, we can do even a, a, a larger break to come back at 10 and do a break. And you can also take a look in the codes. Sounds good? Yes, I have a small question. Okay. So my background is more like from industrial design. Um, can you apply Karamba to um, uh, like chairs or stuff like that, like smaller products? Yes. Yes? Yes, for sure. The problem is uh, the pergunta of Ayub, the complexity, complexity of the geometry. If the chair you can model by surfaces, and these surfaces will be modeled by mesh. Caramba does it. Okay, but if your share, for example, <coughs> sorry, it's kind of geometric, it's small is more volumetric. Mm. No. Got it? This is this is this is the question. Volumetric caramba, you cannot afford. Okay, thanks. So you can break now and come back at ten. Sounds good. I'll I'll send the the codes of grasshopper to your email. Confirm, please, to me, so I, I'm, I can be sure that you received. And at 10, we come back, we have two hours to discuss all the problems and comprehensions and everything. Uh, Sound like a plan? Say, are you? That would be 25 minutes. Uh, Yes, I'm sorry because I, I'm saying uh, yes. Uh, twenty-four minutes now. Twenty-four. Okay. okay. In twenty-four minutes, we come back. Is 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 uh, which would be the hour, the break hour? So in the break hour that is planned, and we come back. Okay. See you. Hello. We come back. Uh, no, no, just ask you about the material. So uh, in in uh, 
In the vertical frame slab building, the, the material is just concrete or is there any way to include reinforcement? So traditionally the reinforcement uh, is, a, is a second step on the reinforcement concrete design. Mm -hmm. So uh, we get the, the, the bending moment the critical bend moments, actually the bend moments along the member, and design the reinforcement and detail, detail it. So in the analysis, in the simulation, the reinforcement traditionally is not there. Uh, so, uh, uh, I guess the the, the the caramba already for for a slab actually has the alternative to, to consider reinforcement. I particularly didn't use yet, but is this which it can be programmed on Python, for example. Uh, getting these bending moments, the list of bending moments, and uh, do the calculation of um, design and the reinforcements, even the tailing in, in it can be it, it can be done. But I guess that uh, 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 with the, the the response of the design that uh, it has, for example, the design ratios below 100%. When you have a valid solution, you can uh, input the solution parameters in a system that automatically does the this reinforcement design like uh, Bentley systems or CP, CPCAD in Spanish. Here in Brazil, you have TQS, TQ, TQS. It's a system that uh, in, a, in a beam um, approach, you can simulate and it's automatically Design the reinforcement and detail it. So uh, you can, with a lot of energy, you can program it in Python, for example, inside the Grasshopper, and do the same. But uh, I guess it's, it's kind of a project of life, maybe. Because uh, it's a lot of uh, consideration that you have to, to do. So I, I, I mentioned that this um, code that I sent to you is a simplified way to do this verification, mailing concrete and timber, because it doesn't have all the rules of standard design code, structured design code. Okay, so it's the first approach to learn how to, to do this. But to design and construct, and construct in the design codes, I suggest um, to do a, a Python script considering this, this coefficient is specific, specifically coefficient. From the test that I have made, okay, because I'm writing this Python code specifically with specific rules from these design codes, standard design codes. This framework that I passed to you is well, what we, we say normally here uh, uh, is more conservative. It should be work. 
it, it, sh it should be working good, okay? But uh, 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 the problem maybe is more uh, you, 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 you can do a design that is more uh, adjusted to design code rules. The, prob the major problem is lateral torsional buckling. But for this grid shell that's not longer uh, panels, for this vertical frame that you have not three star uh, triple star column. So when you don't doesn't have, when you don't have a uh, 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 a slender characteristic, this code that I sent to you should 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 work properly. So in in, in this situation with slenderness and everything, I I, I suggest to you to. To go deep because all the simulations, this, this is a trick, this is not magic. All the simulations demand that you, you have to be, to go deepen in um, theory. Okay? It's, a, it's an exercise, it's a, a practice that we have to do. Uh, when we are going further in using these simulations to satisfy that it's working well, okay? I just see now the question, Felipe, would you suggest Karama to simulate timber joints? Um, let me send an image. Let's, let me see. Okay. This is a, a, a joint uh, in the center of this connection. I will share this. Let me see. Here. And he extended this image. Uh, the point of the the, 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 the the hinge is here, and you have one bar and another. Traditionally, uh, uh, at most of the simulators, we consider the the joint at the end of the element. You have the element, you have the hinge here. So for example, I have a column and a, a beam that is like this. So the hinge is in this extremity, in this end point of the column, okay? And you can have also a joint that is common for all the, the bars. This is more frequent and, and intrusive, not actually, but can be uh, you can consider it in caramba. The trick is Sometimes, because the resolution, the mathematical resolution of finite element method is a resolution of um, matrix equations. And zero 
may be a problem. So the, the input of the joint parameter uh, is a number uh, by a vector. So you input a vector actually. Uh, so I suggest not to put zero, but a small number like 0 0.000001. So maybe this is, can be better for this solution, this is a solution of equations. That is the calculation that the, the engine calculus does. Okay. So you can use uh, joints. The problem is you have to be sure how to do this in order to represent what you want to model in first instance, and in order to not produce unstable structure. Because the the, the 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 equation, the solution of the, the equation will not be possible. And the, the, the response uh, commonly will be uh, one hundred of centimeters of displacement. This is the sign of instability. When you get the response of displacement, maximum displacement, 100, 1,000 million of centimeter, uh, this, means, this, this message means that the system is unstable, generally by putting joints in a way that turns the, the system on the uh, uh, unstable configuration, okay? So timber structures and uh, steel structures in second, maybe, uh, are kind of structures that is very often the use of joints. So you must be careful about that. I suggest to train with simpler models, simpler models, to understand how to do this and increasing experience how to parametric modeling and considering these hinges and joints to do properly. So uh, 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 the model view components show where the joint is. Use it. Another, another problem is which uh, displacement or rotations, you are getting in it in, in, in free to move. Okay? Because caramba is a 3D modeling. In a truss, in a plane truss, the, the joints is not 3D. If, if the joints are conceived to be 3D, the truss make this out of the plane. Okay? This is, this is a thing that happens a lot. So you have to, because the bar is not hinged in this direction. The bar is hinged in this direction. You know? And you, you have to make this fixed Otherwise, the truss will be like this. Okay? This is a, is, a, is a kind of thing that happens and turn 
the, the structural system unstable. Yeah, it's 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 a it's another level of difficulty to 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 to, to deal with uh, hinges or drawings. Maybe somebody can say that that uh, design uh, uh, timber structures or steel can be more difficult because of that. Here in Brazil, uh, somebody said once to me that reinforcing concrete uh, is the the is the human best friend because uh, uh, it's it's more difficult to be a problem to model and construct. Uh, maybe, maybe I have a question about the, the material. So what I'm trying here is just to, to use a material which is from, from the library, the, the Karamba library, and I'm trying to recreate the, uh, the steel, the S235, and I'm not getting the same uh, properties as you did. Is it something different? Maybe I can share my screen and then you can see what I'm talking about. Um, uh, can you see my screen? Yes, I can see. Yeah, so uh, so I'm, I'm just trying to to go and, and and load this steel. The the two. I'm not sure if it's the same one, but uh, the problem is because I I didn't uh, put the name and the ah. standard name is there. Ah, it's the default one. Okay. okay. Yeah, it's a default. Okay. This is the problem. Or not the problem, but this is the, this is the difference. Yeah. Okay. Uh, because I guess it, this information uh, it, it it doesn't take account on the calculation. But if you organize the outputs to to do a a report or something, mm -hmm. you can use I guess for for this. <laughs> but is that a uh, a uh, uh, it has a library yeah. of, of standards, uh, so you can use. Uh, kind of, a, it has a lot of things, much more than we are discussing here. We have to explore it and explore, and uh, 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 but you can uh, customize. To, to the situation. If a material or cross-section, it has a cross-section case, a general cross-section that you have no shape, but the input is the, the cross-section properties. So if you want to use a cross-section that is not uh, customized, like let's say, by caramba, you can customize it calculating or, or input by a CSV table, all the, the numbers that represent the initia, the area, the eccentricities and everything. Okay. This is a, it's a, it's a very good thing, Karamba, because um, the delivery is something that's very usual but it, it makes, it, it delivers also uh, an open uh, interface that you can customize. For example, it, it doesn't have the C shape, but you can, the C cross-section cross shape. Yeah. But you can use, Customizing it, customizing it. Uh, I think I have a problem maybe with the versions compatibility here, because when I try to open the code, it says that the loads component is missing. But if I try to type it in, in the in my canvas, um, I do have the loads component. So can you show me where it's supposed to go or maybe just send me a, a print of your screen or something? So 
Uh, just let me ask you a question. Uh, you, you already have a caramba, is that? Yeah, I already have a license. Ah, okay. Uh, I think if I share my screen, you can see and you can uh, make a, a print screen. Could be okay. like that. Okay, sure. Uh, which 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 one is? Uh, I think all, all the codes have the loads component, right? Mm. But do, does it go like in the same in the same place as the uh, others? Yeah, uh, let's let's do something. Can you share your screens because I, I think I can help you more on this way. Okay, so just let me close it up here. Um, so just a second. Okay, here, so this is my license. I, my version is the 1.3.2, but if I open it, like any code here, for example, let's see a lighter. See, there are unrecognized objects from a past version 1.15. That's weird. Yeah, the, it's the loads components, but uh, I cannot download it. Like if I try to download it, it doesn't work. So okay. if I just close it here. Oh, oh my wait. God. Okay, here. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> So, but if I try uh, to type in here loads, see, I do have the loads component. Okay. Yeah. So Click I just on it. put put on there. I I will show you uh, what to. Do. Auto. What what? Can you see it? Is it frozen just for me, or did he freeze for everybody? No, I think he's frozen also for everybody. Oh, OK. So we'll... Hey, you're back. Ah, OK. okay. okay. Put, put this component uh, near where the, 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 they are not anymore. Yeah, so I don't know where it's missing or where it's supposed it's, to go. Uh, on the right, right a little bit right. A what little bit it? left. A bit left. <laughs> uh, uh, it's left of this. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. This, yeah, this, this, this empty, uh, this empty space. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, my vectors are. Uh, click on on type of load. Type of load. Cl click on that. Yeah. Uh, change gravity to uniform line. So the well, z vector, the z vector enters in vector. Yes. Yeah. Zero in L case. Zero in L case. Okay. Okay. Make a copy of this component, load component. Oh. Uh, put put uh, above above. Uh, like this. Uh, yeah. No? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, another copy and above. Yes. Uh, turn it to to gravita gravitational in, instead of form line. Gravity. Gravity. Okay. Yeah. And uh, put this zero one in L case. Enter these three on load with shift. On load, okay. Oh, yeah, maybe it's okay. Because it's running. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a bit slower. Yeah. Okay, okay so it's probably the same for the others, I believe. Yeah. Okay, so. That, that's the only place that needed it, right? 
yeah, I guess. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's loading now. Maybe it'll take a while. My my computer doesn't help either, but yeah, I think yeah, that's it. Yeah, and because because it's 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 a medium size, the the small orders, not so light because it has a. a uh, because in the the time of calculation, the, this kind of weight is related by the length of the lists of the the, the size, the amount of information. So yeah. if you have more nodes, you have more demand to processing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. See, see if the design ratio is working well. Okay, let me check. In the, in the right place, in the right part of the code. Design ratio. Yes, Martin. Yeah, uh, thank I, you. Uh, uh, it's point. I'm it's I'm not sure. line. Uh, Lisa, uh, Martin, help it. It's not line load. It's point load. Wait, 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 let me share it again. Yeah. What? Uh, just a second. So I thank, have to go. Thank you, Martin. You have a lot. Uh, it's point load instead in the form line. Point. The second one, yes. Point to load on. Okay. Uh, a, a, a hint. Click with the, the right button of the mouse in this component on the right, the assemble, and turn it, uh, disable it, for instance. Before changing everything, Before right? change everything. Yeah, it just froze. Okay. Perfect. So, nice now. And so Z, no, this this is okay. Z is force. Oh, it, it disconnects after. Yeah, when you yeah. change. Z is force. Zero. Uh, LK is perfect. Force, okay. Uh, but it demands a, a pause end. You have to connect the points that is on the left. A little bit the, on the left, on the left, on the left. The points. The, uh, yeah. I guess is this turn it turn it uh, view, uh, is no it's not it the 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 form find I guess is not working. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, some things get uh, is the load is the load. Uh, you see this void in the right, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. He oh, left. Right. Yeah, it is a load. It's a point load there. Okay, so there are many loads then. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> I guess that you can after point load after uh, uh, update. Okay, your license it's it's uh, uh, allow it. Wait. So which version are you using? The last one. Mine, mine the is last one. Uh, yeah, I was even checking it. So it's this one point three point three. Yeah. Uh, okay. But you can do it uh, later. Let let, okay. let let's see there. Okay, because mine is one point three point two, so maybe that's it. Yeah, uh, turn gravity to point load. Yes, uh, this is the on force. Uh, pause in connect to to nodes on the left. Yeah, yeah, this what? one, this one. This one, oh, perfect. Load on assembly. And no LKs for this one? No, it's not, not need for this. Load, load on assembly. On assembly. Yeah, let's see. Okay. Uh, go to the right. Uh, let's, this three, uh, yes. Activate the visualization of this. The all three? Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. It worked. No. So this guy that is below Only is this one. this one on the post end. 
No, no. Connect this one, yes. Connect this yeah, one. Only on the third the, one, right? On the, yes. This okay. on the right line, pause in. Perfect. And the below okay. also. Great. So now I can now activate I can now. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I have to check the. What do I have to check now? The displacement. All of them, but it's it's missing something. Again, okay. <laughs> no, but it's not it's not the karma problem. But you have to point the CSV. Go back to the left. All the way to the beginning. I, no, red one, red one. Okay. Yeah, the first one. Click with the right button. Select one as system file. Oh, and it's the CSV that you sent, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'll do that. I I did not download it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Sorry for. No, the it's okay because it's kind of review how about the code works. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I guess it was uh, good for everyone, maybe. Uh, try out to connect and 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 say to me if it works. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Everything's okay. It's difficult to understand. What is the difficulty? I have a question. Um, here in the grid shell file, you're using um, <clears throat> like to generate the model. You're using um, large deformation analysis or like mm -hmm. uh, applying loads to the points. Mm -hmm. But, um, and you, uh, I think you're using like the gravity to generate the 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 load, or in a in a C vector. Like when you when you're generating the the model, you use a, a vector in the C in the C direction. But um, can you use uh, another type of uh, vector or forces to generate this volume, like con contract forces or expand uh, forces? Uh, you can use, for example, uh, the form find to inflate the structures, for example. You can use it? You can use it, but the, the, the trick is you have to turn the point load to be oriented to local coordinate system because it be normal mm -hmm. to the surface and uh, is uh, in the way where the force is acting in the inflated structures. So this part of the code is just simulating the hanging chain experiment. So it's, it's kind of uh, abstract uh, understanding because the load is one and the, the section, section size is one million or something like that. Okay. It's not structural actually. Okay, it's uh, using the solver to, in a simplified way, in approximately uh, to do this simulation of hanging chain, to do the form find, because the, the shape, the form found, uh, is a form that should be working 
mailing on actual uh, fossils. That is the characteristics of funicular systems in compression. Okay, uh, I can use uh, also to maybe do tensile structures, for example, or cable. Okay. Uh, but I don't I don't know if I understand well your question and if I answered it. <laughs> it has a lot of methods to form fine. This is one of them. You can use flex hopper, you can use kangaroo, you can use mm -hmm. the other solver engines non-linear non engines to do this form finals, okay? You, you can have similar responses uh, uh, from these paths, okay? To solve this problem of form finding funicular shapes. This is one of them. Yeah, I was thinking like if you have a... Um any material and you apply like um, loads from the sides mm -hmm. and to generate a curve in the... Yeah, the, the I got, now I get it. Now yeah. I get it. Now I get it. This is another type of form fine. It's kind of post forming, for example. And the, the, the Newton half song engine that Caramba have, okay, can do this kind of on fine. The bendy active structures. You 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 book you 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 provoke a buckling in the in the in in grid of bars and the buckling get this grid upside uplift right is this yes compressing compressing this the, the bar. yes this is this is not rigid grid shell it's like this one this is post forming or bending bending active structures okay it's kind of uh, uh pretensioning uh kind of structure in the pretensioning, um, you know, as a pre compression, actually. Uh, so, to find that is, that how much load I need to apply, so I can. You have to find how much load if the material uh, 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 can afford this, because yeah. it has this problem also. Yes. You have to do this material that has a, a ratio between elasticity and strength. Mm. So bamboo, uh, some species of bamboo, it's not all of them, some species of bamboo uh, can afford this kind of, of thing. Uh, some arrangements that you will make the the grid like this or like this, not only like this, you know? Because only if you do this, the grid, you are distancing the axis from the axis of the compound and you are lowering the stress, but the forces get high, the force to to assemble yeah you know so it has a, a a lot of investigation that you can do about that but the solver in caramba uh can be newton hobson or dynamic relaxation because this problem is a non-linear problem okay okay is is more complex also yeah. Because you have to do with 
uh, numerical instabilities, maybe. Yeah, it's, it's not so simple, but it's a wonderful uh, uh, theme to investigate, uh, including our times, because uh, depending on the design, you can uh, uh, design a structure that it, it can be assembled uh, fast with few people. So emergency constructions, for example, can be made temporary. Yeah. Yeah. It's very nice. Like uh, thinking of in make a tent, maybe. So to flag all the, uh, the, the sticks in the, in a tent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, or maybe like self assembly uh, products using uh, elastic fabrics. Mm -hmm. That's what I was, I was thinking. Uh, okay. <laughs> nice. I have a question. Uh, do you understand the concept of design ratio? This limit the, that, the, that is the indexes that uh, provide information of acceptability or suitability of the structure. It was clear for everyone, this concept. Uh, no, maybe you can reiterate, please, again. Sorry? Uh, can you explain again once more time? Uh, the design ratio concept, design ratio for uh, displacement, uh, forces, and buckling. I can uh, share the screen again. This is the design ratio for displacement. So. If it's under one or 100%, the structure attends the, this criteria of structural design regarding the maximum displacement. Uh, I made in this sense uh, against strength material strength of the material, if the, 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 the section is broken or not by the forces acting on the structures. By normal stress or shear stress. Okay, if it's under one or 100%, attends the structure design criteria from the should to design code and which means if is under 100 percent the structural members do not fall apart do not broke do not will be crushed or smashed by the forces that is developed by the, 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 structural, the structural working. Or do not present or exhibit larger displacement, displacement uh, beyond that the structural design code allows. Or even do not develop buckling. Okay? These ratios, indexes, is the response that says that the structure is suit suitable. The design is attending the requirements of the functioning of it. In Caramba, in the simplified way, I made this for displacement, for buckling, and for normal and shear stress from the component here. Strictly, 
uh, mainly for concrete, reinforcing concrete and timber, this is very uh, approximate, but it works well, should work well here, okay? But uh, going forward, going forward and uh, further uh, deep in the design codes, you can write a Python code that will be a source of delivering the design ratio, design ratios for normal stress and shear stress using the coefficients of a specifically design code. Okay? It helped? It's more clear? Yes, but, but all this formula, like, um, you, you have to change it in the definition in Grasshopper? Or... No. All the formula is there. Yeah. All the so formula is here. For all materials or all Which ma the, the material, the difference of material is here. For concrete yeah. and timber, you can use 1.4. And for steel and aluminum and everything, 1.1, for example. OK? Uh, for material, it has a difference here because the, the limit of displacement, it changes from material to material. You can simplify it and say, look, this, this structure can only uh, show displacement under one centimeter, for example, because it's, it's a limit very short, one centimeter. And you can simplify this, this guy. Here, yeah. okay. So I like this. You can change here, and this guy here. That is it. You can admit that this limit is one centimeter, for example, to compare the developed maximum displacement that you can. Uh, that that is an output from Caramba. This is an output from Caramba. This is design code. This is an output from Caramba. This is design code. This is an output from Caramba. Actually, Caramba gives this, this for us also. Okay, here. Because this buckling factor is actually the inverse of the design ratio for buckling. Okay. Just a second. I have I'm having a hard time understanding it, but uh, displacement is uh, deformation. It's not deformation because displacement it has a dimension, and deformation is dimensionless. Mm. Deformation. Look at this example. This is my bar. If I compress my bar it exhibits a displacement, for example, the one centimeter, and the deformation is one centimeter is the ratio between the displacement against the length. This is deformation. When, I, when we see this, we usually say, this deformation is not wrong, but this point to here is a displacement. Okay? This is a deformed configuration, but the distance the distance between this point to this point is a displacement because it has a dimension. It's 
something centimeters, something millimeters. It has a dimension. You can deformation is a relative deformation. Mm -hmm. So what would be the Portuguese equivalent to it? So just so I can... Uh, deformação e deslocamento. It's, it's, it's almost the same. Ah, okay, okay. Deformação e deslocamento. Easier. Also, uh, buckling is fl flambagem? Flamba? Flambagem. Okay, easier. Much easier now. Great. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I have a, a, a model here. It's kind of rubber that mm. I use in my class to show torsion. Yeah. And bending. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Compression is not so easy because it's easily buckless. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Buckling, buckling is not a displacement. It has its it, it developed displacement, but buckling is a instability phenomenon. Buckling. Okay. Thank you. I have a question about the, the last thing you were talking about and like seeing it now in the grasshopper uh, with the components there, what exactly is the component disassembled doing? Because like it grabs all of, all of what you were talking about and you like put it all in this component of the symbol. What, what is exactly that component doing? The assemble? Uh, disassemble, sorry. Disassemble, sorry. Uh, yeah, is in this lab displacement. Sorry, what is in the context in which is it is calculating the lab displacement? Okay, I mean it's in sequence. Yeah. You have this lab displacement, right? You have the symbol. Um... Can you can you share? Yeah, cool. yeah. There. Is it seen? Yes. Mm, not yet. Yeah. Okay. So, like, uh, this component, like, gives the the shell structure. So I don't understand, like, what's happening between uh, this oh, component and this okay, component. Okay. Okay. Because I I, I use in the the frame also. Uh I want to I want the lines because the the result of the simulation uh, the form fine uh, is pick these lines or bars and make the the form fine process to to have the form found right yes so I want the lines in the form found situation. So I, I, I want to I want to extract for this output for, for large the form in which it's getting out in the model. Yes, there in the model output. I have to extract this information that is there from the in in, uh, in some way. Okay? Okay. This the symbol give me that. It has another another way to, to have this, but I, I guess this the symbol is because the assemble get everything together. Supports, loads, blah 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 blah. Put it in the engine. So now I want to unpack it. So this this symbol uh, is make the inverse that assemble does. You know. Ah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay, but. Uh, 
the information was transformed because the, the input is the flat one. I assemble it, process by the engine calculation, and unpack it, transform it. Because behind the curtains is what is happening. It's assemble an equation, a matricial equation. All the simulators does it, all, all of them. The caramba just uh, change this uh, interface. Instead, we are writing lines of code to build this matricial equation that calculates and itself is the structural simulation we do this. We do, we, we do this. We assemble in, in this interface. Uh, in, in, in robot structure analysis or ANSYS, we have another interfaces. We click the member, uh, 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 model the member with the mouse, select the member with the, the point mouse and the point a number. Uh, with cross-section, uh, uh, material, information, and so on. Okay? Yeah, yeah, perfect. Thank so you. So it's, 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 another, it's another interface, but all of them builds a system of equation. So I guess for, 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 for people uh, that has a, a background on design and architecture that uh, didn't do class with calculus and physics and everything can use, learn to use the simulation, understand the basics of these phenomena without to build the equation numerically because it's, it's harder yeah <laughs> it's far way harder than this you know but if you understand the basic functioning of the things this is uh, uh what let let me stop the the, because it's, it's identified is not a face and blur. <laughs> I, I don't know. I am not using uh, Zoom meeting frequently, and uh, I I did this, and then I don't know to to get out. But here, here in my face, this hinge is just in this plane, but is not in this, you know? It's not rotating here. This understanding is very valuable to model computational models. If you understand these concepts of structure, uh, 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 arrangements, and equilibrium, this is one of the most important to, to make a model, a structural model, digital structural model works working properly without building a system of equation. But I have to, 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 to have this in mind. What, is do, what, are, what the computer is doing is to build a, a, a system of equations. I have to, to, to have this in, 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 in mind. So the magic disappears. OK? So. Uh, it has an, a library in Python that is free. That's kind of uh, uh, the name is 
Open seas. Open seas is a, is a, is a, is a very, very known. It's not actually very known, but it's, it has on, on, on the surface of Earth uh, for several years. And uh, there is a guy that's writing a library in Python that is called Open Seas Pi. What it means, it's a, it's a library that library is a concept uh, similar to add-ons to Grasshopper. You can consider it as a toolbox. So the OpenSysPy, it's a library in Python that constructs models in finite element method from scratch, from line coding. You know, it's, it's, it's the same, but completely different. It's the same because the, the mission is build a system of equation and solve it. So the inter, but the interface is completely different. It's, it's harder. It's harder to, 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 I just want to point here that actually you can, uh, if you're familiar, of course, with Python, I don't know how many of you know, but you can actually script in Caramba just using the, the import uh, Grasshopper Python. Uh, I yes. guess that is not anymore available. Uh, I, I, I haven't tried it in a while, but what I do usually is, uh, is I just import the... Yeah, in this way, it's it's available. In this like way, it's available, it's but it was it, it like, was available. Like, it was available bit. outside the rhinoceros, but I guess it's not anymore. It's not. No, no. You have to run it from from uh, from Rhino, and then you can just go and then yeah, you you can do you can do this. And here you have access to all the exactly. I I, I do that. There, because there are a couple of plugins that you can that there is no scripting API, so I use this method. So if any of you, yeah, it, it's it's out. it's a very good thing because uh, it's uh, because Grasshopper it, it's it's just an interface. Yeah. It's running. Actually, I I'm not sure how it works, but Python. It's kind of interface also. I love NumPy, it's a library of Python. It's not Python, it's C. Actually, because this is explained because NumPy is so fast. Yeah. So you can use, for example, in this path that you showed, uh, considering some steps of modeling that is not allowable in the normal use of Grasshopper, for example, to do uh, parallel processing. You know? It has the CPU parallel processing in GH Python that can have access on this, not GPU that would, would be wonderful. Yeah, but CPU you can use from Python. Uh, I I didn't use yet the the uh, this um, library this how to call it. not function. I, I forgot the name now. These modules. Yeah of the, the, the caramba to model in a single component of GH Python, GH Python. Yeah. You, can, you can do this. And is the, 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 the old school more, uh, way, né? getting to build the structural model. That is an system of equation in a form of matrix. So this is what the, this connection of components of Caramba make. So 
what uh, beyond this workshop uh, that I suggest is to to make uh, uh, deliberate practice exercise 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 study the the, the theory but mainly exercise and using uh, the world community by uh, through Google because almost everything somebody already have done or, 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 or started. Yeah, so you, you can uh, learn a lot how to do a grid shell, how to do this band active Martin, how to do this, how to experiment, and you uh, can expand your capabilities to modeling. But it's a construction, it's a, 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 a self construction. Uh, in these ability, abilities to modeling, not only structure, all the kinds of simulations, of build simulations, street, uh, city simulations also. It's a, a never ending adventure. When, when, when you start to, to, to code in Python, it's like this, because it's almost in every uh, 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 field of knowledge, you have a library. You have a library for, for scientific calculation. You have a library for statistics. You have a library for GIS and georeferential analysis. You have a library to almost everything. Artificial intelligence. So it's a learning by demand. You have to accumulate hours of flight. And fly, fly, fly around the world and the outer space. <laughs> but the thing is, I like Grasshopper exactly because it is a visual programming language. I mean, I'm from architecture, so I am a very visual person by mm -hmm. nature. So uh, I was actually trying to run away from scripting in textual la languages. So maybe there's no way how, right? <laughs> I guess that uh, uh, Grasshopper, I use a lot of Grasshopper in, in my research also, uh, because it's comparing to, to script uh, outside the rhinoceros, for example, it's heavy. Mm. It demands a lot of uh, computational resources. Mm. But it depends if it is a simpler model, it's the same. But if you are working on a model, complex, and uh, with a lot of data, the problems arise. My opinion about Grasshopper is the, that the learning curve is very steep. You learn very fast and start to make things and simulate and everything with a, a good conscious on what you are doing very fast. So mm -hmm. I guess it's a, a excellent beginning, not only for architects, for engineers, students also, because the logic is more obvious and you spend not too much time in the beginning uh, uh, about the syntax of coding and more on the logical to build the algorithm that independs on the platform. You can do something on Grasshopper, you could do something in Python outside the Hinocellus, for example. It has the, the open nerves library. It is, you can install it outside the Hinocellus example but it's I, I don't know if it's worth it but you can do it you know so i usually say that to go to python or to go to jaga python because jaga python it has things that grasshopper naturally doesn't do 
For example, while and for loops. Loops, yeah. You can access loops inside Grasshopper by or Python or, or the script language inside Grasshopper. Mm -hmm. And you can expand once you dominate it completely the, the Grasshopper. Yeah, I want more. Go to Python. Mm -hmm. You know, because you have already the basis to do this. The logic, the understanding of functions or I forgot that again. Uh, the module because it's very similar it's very similar but it's different and you have more power and you can use outside if it's necessary you know yeah Platform. Oh, okay uh, I also have another question because uh, for my project, um, I already work a lot with geodesic domes in, in, in my office. So, and I was even working on one now, so I thought it would be interesting to match these two things together, the project that I'm working on and maybe trying to apply Caramba to it. But how, uh, but it's not a shell grid, right? A geodesic dome, but it's not a simple beam either, so. I have something for you. Great, I, I can show you, wait, let me share my screen quickly here. So this is the dome. Uh, yeah. And so. I think you, you will love it. I'm sure I will. So here, uh, <laughs> let me just hide it. And like, this would be the, the structure part of it. Awesome. Let's say to you, I wrote an article on Sigradi that implements the wind load uh, standard design code, Brazilian wind load standard design code, on Grasshopper. You, using Ladybug? No, using nothing. Using, I, 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 will, I will share to show you. Just a minute. Using, no need to use a, a, an additional add-on, but it works only to, to domes or... The one that uh, I'm... Huh? The one that I'm working on. Yeah. Nice, then perfectly. Yeah. Let me find some, just a minute. Here's the link. And uh, I will share to comment something. Um, This image is from the, the NBR 6123. That is the sta standard design code to, to calculate the, the wind load uh, to some shapes. And for this shape, it has this eyes of plats. I don't know if it's correct in English. <laughs> But is the regions uh, of acting loads on this kind of shape, and I compare it with uh, a CFD, and uh, with grasshopper components, I projected that image to have Ooh. the vectors of the loads. 
And the most complicated part to model it is solved because we have a uh, pressure on it and suction on these regions. So we can apply it and uh, have some results of deformations and everything. And you do that to define the cross-section of the, the structure, is that it? Yeah, uh, the, main, the main thing here is how to consider wind load without using an engine, you know? Mm -hmm. Because you have all the loads implementing this code in this kind of shape. And you have the, the easier one is the gravitational, it's still self-weight, it's the cladding weight and everything. And how about wind load? You have this code. Okay. okay? So you have all the loads acting in this structure. Um, and you can design your structure. Mm -hmm. Okay? Combining all these this loads. It's more clear, Henrique, the, the question that you have made to me by mail. Yeah, I think it is. Thank you. Okay. Right now, actually, I'm having some questions, but I think it's more grasshopper related than caramba related. So it's not a problem. We can we can deal with with it also. So I'll, I'll try to explain it then. Okay. For example, uh, the even at the first steps where, where we're trying to make a. a, a this model based on lines instead of uh, those, how do you call it? Instead of curves, right? So I should get a put, uh, uh, this curve and divide it by little, segment, little segments. Yeah. But uh, in the moment, that I divide some curves that are on the x axis and the y axis, those points which which first were connect intersecting won't intersect anymore, right? All the lines must encounter encounter each other mm -hmm. by a vet, by a node. Mm -hmm. You you cannot have this. All considering right. the, that this is a segment, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, you have to break it to to have a node to connect to to this another line. Okay. Because Perfect. the segment is connected by nodes. Mm -hmm. This is the same uh, against the this lab that is modeled by a mesh. Mm -hmm. I have to be the, the nodes of the mesh that is doing the interface with the beam that supports it coincident in the same coordinate. The, the node of the mesh is, it has to be in the same place of the node of the beam. This is because I have to break the beams that receive slabs in parts so I, uh, I can connect the beam with the slab. If I put the, the, the beam uh, in one piece, I cannot connect with the slab key that is completely subdivided. Okay. It's the same when you have a lot of bars, a grid shell or uh, a truss, mm -hmm. 
I I have to have a node here, a node here. If I had a bar here, I must to break this line to have a node here to connect to, to another one here, for example. This connection is what connect the parts. And this is not caramba. Mm -hmm. This is complete the geometry modeling. All right, yes, exactly. And not only for structure is the key. The consistent geometric modeling that will be input for the simulation. Not only for structural simulation. But we, I, I have to understand how it works, the simulation, because this is this, what we are uh, talking about is finite element modeling, basically. And a finite element is one segment, is a linear finite element. A face, a uh, squared one, for example, of a mesh is a finite element of a shell element. You know? So we have a connection between the geometry entities and these entities of the methods of, of calculus, calculation methods. So the segment line, it's an element, a linear element of finite element. A face of a mesh is a finite element of a shell model. In a solid that karma doesn't work, but ANSYS does, is a, a pyramid, for example, is an, a, a, a unit element of a polyedric mesh. That's a mesh, a volumetric mesh that it doesn't exist in the Rhino. I guess that that the solid does not exist instead of it uh, 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 B wrap because a lot of things we can do without solids and solids has more information, more data than B wrap. And if it has more information, more data, it's heavier, you know? So we can skip our uh, full the computer. So do it for me. You know, this is a trick that we, we do const constantly. Make, make, make the computer full. I, I can do this, oh, my way, but you can do it in this way. Okay, this is a, a trick we, we have to, 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 to expand more and more and more uh, to do what we, we, we want to do. So when I get the rest, the, 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 the answer, the, the response of the model, firstly, uh, it's better to, 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 to exaggerate the scale of the formation to see if the things is, are connected. You know? Because when you exaggerate the, the deformation scale, you see if the slab is deformating, is deforming uh, with the beams together or not, or is it is uh, it's making this, you know? It's kind of uh, after coding, I, I, I have to see if it's working properly before uh, a broader use to do optimization, everything, kind of a debugging to, to, to to certify that the model is completely correct. We have more 
13 minutes. And if someone uh, wants to share what wants to do in the project, but the plan is in the very beginning tomorrow, uh, you do a fast presentation, kind of three minutes of maximum presentation, what you are, you want to, to, to work. And uh, everybody and me can help to everybody achieve your objectives, okay? And uh, in the, 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 the final hour of tomorrow, you present the, the results. So tomorrow is just working, no more lectures, but uh, I will be available to help as, as much as I can. Okay? Somebody? Okay. Every, everything is okay, Mirella, Srinath? Um, yes. So sorry, I have a beginner, <laughs> and uh, I understand the a little, but uh, I will try to to do anything tomorrow. Okay. I, I was just going through the scripts and checking out all the data flows, but still confusing. What's 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 the main problem? I think uh, pretty much to the assemble part, everything is same according to the sequence of. Uh, all the project files which you gave, but after that, uh, not getting it. Get it. Uh, uh, something I... I, I you you I, see, the, those technical parts, right, which we haven't gone through as architects, so that's... To prepare the results, I, I made something that maybe you can have questions about it. Uh, using data tree and lists, okay? I can talk about a little about it, that. In column and uh, beams, I manipulated the data. So store every bean, in a branch of the data tree. In, in a slab also, because the maximum displacement that is considered is that uh, it, it's a relative maximum displacement. So I, I, I have to, because this lab is supported by beans, that is my fingers. And it's deformated, but but my fingers it's it's moving also. But to evaluate the slab, the displacement is the displacement from here to here, not the global displacement. So I have to subtract this guy from this guy. How I did this? I put every member in a branch, and for each branch of the data tree, I get the maximum and the minimum, yeah. and subtract. This is the maximum relative displacement. You know, this is this is not caramba itself. This is grasshopper. This is why I, I, I was talking. Oh, look, this is this programming and manipulating data and everything. Because that this treatment to, to be in accord, uh, in, in, in accord with the concept of to get the maximum displacement, the, the maximum relative displacement. I did some manipulation. So observe the size of list, how many beams it has before the calculation and after. This is a key to understand 
more or less what I did. Uh, compare the, the before the, the, the break the beams, the entire lines is the beam. For example, 49 beams. When I break, it's, it has more segments. But I started in branch in a data tree. Data type. So this, this kind of things uh, uh, maybe can lead to, to some questions. But the more important about your concern to do the project for tomorrow is how can I parameterize my geometry? You know? This is the key. Because the other things and the details and everything, I can help. I can help also the other things. But the, 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 the major concern is how I can model and parameterize the geometry that I, I, I want to, to design. This is the, the, I think, I suggest that you put more the mindset on it. Okay. Okay, so just to be clear, uh, the geodesic dome, I treat it as a grid shell, right? So I have to turn it into a mesh in the code. I'm sorry, I didn't understand. The, the geodesic dome that I want to work with. Because uh. uh, you said that you had, uh, for the geometry, if it were bars, you worked with lines. And if it was a shell grid, it would be a mesh. So for a geodesic dome, is a shell grid? No, no, actually. You have to, to have the lines to be input in line to being component. Okay. Just it. Just okay. it. Uh, if you want just to parameterize the cross section, which means that the the because Look at that. The, geode the geodesic, you have the, the radius of the hemisphere, right? Right, Lisa? Yeah, yeah. You have the radius of the hemisphere. You have the size of the panel as a parameter that can be a variable. And you have the size of the bars. You can put all of this parametric or consider that image that you, you have shown mm -hmm. and parameterize just only the cross section. So you put all that lines in line to bin uh edit in one of this code for example the the grid shell one and disregarding all the rest before okay, okay? do you understand them yeah no mm, mm, uh-huh <laughs> <laughs> Oh, see. Start, start from the simple one to complex. You, you take the lines of that you already, already have and put in the line to beam component. Consider just, for instance, the gravitational load. Hey, it's okay. Put hey. the, the support and everything. It's okay, it's working, okay. Let's put another layer, wind load. Let's put another layer. Read the catalog of uh, cross-section. Let's put another layer. And in these steps, 
you are building a model you know don't don't uh, don't concern about make everything uh, at once do something simpler consider uh, 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 last things uh, see if it's working it's working okay let's move forward and so on okay, okay. Okay. And tell to me, tell me, what's uh, the problem? I don't understand here specifically because I uh, can uh, help to solve it. Okay. okay. Yeah. So just please send the, the presentation. So it's okay, easier. I will send it now. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Let's see. We are almost done for today. Um, Let me ask you something else. Go ahead. Very quickly. So, uh, in your definition, I'm finding a load that's, yeah, that's the gravity, which is applied to, to the whole system, right? I believe. And just below it, it's the the self weight, which is applied to the as the uniform line type of load. No, uh, the, uh, which model is it? Uh, it's the simple sub beam, simply sub beam. No, it's a it's a load that can be the reaction of a slab or a wall. Oh, okay. It's a line load. It's a line load. Mm -hmm. It's it's just it's just a model to compare the hand calculation. All right. Okay. I'll open another one then. But this that this beginning of a of a model we should should have the line to beam elements, the gravity, and the self weight, right? Should be enough, and yeah. and the support. Yeah. Okay. To, to, to make it the, the first step. All right. And you... Then we go further with the material. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Nice. Anyone more? So we have done our our time today. I hope that uh, you like it, and I'm looking forward to tomorrow so I can work more and uh, reframe this this relationship with structure. <laughs> okay, and see you. Have a nice day and Thanks see you tomorrow. Bye bye. bye, bye. Thank, you. thank you. So, did you did you have some time to to do something? Oh, Philip. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> morning. Do you know about the, the project? Already know what you want to do? <laughs> I have some, some ideas, but uh, I'm not sure. Okay, okay. You can you can uh, show your ideas, and I will try to help to to choose. For example, uh, right now. Uh, yep. Yeah. 
I took some some previous structures I've been developing at Grasshopper, and I tried to add Caramba to it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm still not familiar with all the Caramba components. So basically, I, I was doing a I was comparing the files you sent to my own, and then I was adding bit by bit. Mm -hmm. And there is one that I think it's working quite well. Um, perhaps I can share my, my screen. Yeah, you can. Mm. Nice. So it's it's just a, a form finding process that I did here, mm -hmm. where with where kangaroo, you can, with kangaroo exactly, where you can move a point. Um, and 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 take the, the closest points of this point from a previous from this previous mesh. Um, and then the structure. Ah, yeah. You can move which points are anchored, right? Mm -hmm. And then this was quite easy. Just I just added that trust file. This is a deformation graph. You can uh, see without just uh, changing the scale, you know? Yeah. I, I found right here, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was. It is pretty cool. Yeah. But. Uh, this and all and also. Excel press. Uh, yeah. This. Scale doesn't work for Excel Trend, right? Um, I'm not sure if uh, the bars is aligned with the normal. Did you did you do that? No, I guess not. I should have done that. Um, create like planes. Cross planes, something like that. In the in the code that I sent uh, for grid shell, it has a, a a a block with four components or something like oh, that. Okay. That that does it. Okay, I'll check it out uh, later. This is one thing. It's, it's above, above there. Yeah, this is it. Okay. Uh, it's the start point of every bar. Mm -hmm. Um, and and take the mesh to to get the, the, the normals. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. The normal vectors. Uh, one. It's very interesting. It's it's a free form. Um, and uh, one problem about it in the constructability mm -hmm. uh, point of view is that the quadrilateral panels is not always, are not always uh, planned. Uh-huh, plain surface, yeah. Yeah. So it but it depends, on... not, not necessarily, but it depends of the cladding. Uh, yeah. If I... you use a, a kind of a, a, a surface, a, 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 uh, a membrane, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. 
But if you work with pennies, uh, they can uh, they can allow this deformation, or you 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 had to to to, to use try triangle. Uh, try triangle. Okay. Yeah. Right here, for example, we can see it. Yeah. Nice. And actually, the thing that I'll, I'll try to develop today, I've been working with, uh, I don't know if Mirella is already online. Mm. Yes, she's online, connecting out now. Uh, which, which cross section are you using? Right here? Yeah. Uh, it's on the left here. The is a uh, um, let me see. Uh, this is a is a wood. Okay. Yeah, it's wood. Wood yeah, so and the rectangular ones. Mm -hmm. Okay. We we are trying to develop a structure built with uh, bamboo lamin laminated bamboo. Wood. Nice. Something like that. I don't know uh -huh. any name. So you have to put the the bamboo constants on the material. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes some books or articles uh, has these uh, numbers, these constants. Some title, you said? Some articles. Ah, some articles. Like this. Uh, 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 articles. Mm -hmm. Texts. Texts, uh, academic texts. Okay. I'll check it out. Yeah, uh, it, but it depends of the species. Mm -hmm. So the the people that is producing this laminated, if you know them, mm -hmm. uh, maybe they 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 can provide they can provide this information. Yeah, for. For now. Because, because without constants, the the standard value on the material is still. So mm -hmm. in this in this situation uh, is considering still. So the deformations and everything is uh, still. Put put the malls uh, above the e. There, uh, this number is for steel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the deformation is uh, like bars made of steel in that size, uh, 10 centimeters. Okay, this number should be very different. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, also, it should be or this orthotropic, right? I guess. I, I don't know because in the manual of Caramba says that this orthotropic is it's. It's more useful for um, uh, plates. Okay. Uh, for wood. That it's mainly autotropic. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Very nice. So for for the for the real or more realistic response. Uh, get these numbers from wood or uh, from bamboo and the species that is that you want to okay and, and the number I'm looking for should should it, it, it's not this uh, hardness Brin, Brunel. no it's young models or models of elasticity okay uh, generally is e. All right, perfect. Um, okay. Thank you. I want to develop more the idea before I I present it. So okay. Just a few minutes and I, I will try to expose. Okay, no problem. <laughs> also, um, with the geodesic, geodesic. Dome idea from yesterday. 
that I already presented. So I'll be working a bit more on the code before I bring my doubts here later. Okay. <clears throat> Lisa, the, the with the bird, it has a generator of, I'm not sure if it's a dodeca adron. Oh, uh, I use, it's from another plugin, I believe, Bulletin. Yes, but with the bird, it has a parametric generator that can generate parametrically your uh, DOM. Just, just a hint. Yeah, but let end also. I can control its frequency, size, radius. Perfect. Perfect. Nice. Maybe I'll just start showing a little bit what I'm working on, uh, and uh, then I'll maybe I'll just jump in every now and then with uh, my questions. So uh, what I'm doing pretty much is just trying to uh, to change a little bit the grid shell example, and then <clears throat> and then enter my own grids. Uh, so what I did is I took a very simple uh, shell with four supports from the sides. And I'm trying to do a comparative approach between the different tessellations and then trying to see to maybe to generate those optioneering graphs and eventually uh, understand which tessellation would work with as little material as possible. So if I manage to, to, to apply that script on these three different tessellation, I would call that a, a success. Very nice, very good. Uh, just a, a hint. Yes. Um, two points of support. Um, four, four. This. Ah, uh, uh, this is a support also. Yeah, yeah. The, the, oh, all perfect. The are four. Uh, I oh. don't think with two. With <laughs> yeah. Always tilt. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So perfect, perfect. Very, very good. Uh, very good um, um, application. Go ahead no, with all my, my support. Thanks. Go further. How about Mirella, Vaibhav, and Sidnath? Hey, can I press on my screen? OK. So yeah, I thought of doing something like an hyperbolic uh, paraboloid, so, which is uh, similar to Ayub's thing. And uh, I already created a geometric definition. Yeah. So this is something like a rectangular and you can control the uh, span of the beam. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I have taken this uh, four line data will be the supporting column. Mm -hmm. And uh, these four line data uh, would be the beam. So, data and four points for the support system. Mm -hmm. And then uh, again, a mesh uh, to for the shell, the slab shell. So basically, it will have like four columns and B along with the shell. So I can just try out the basic vertical frame slab thing. And nice. also can control the column height. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
and this surface uh you um are thinking about which material you uh you realize just, it uh, everything is concrete concrete okay. column beam and slab ah, okay perfect and also i thought if i had some time after this maybe can generate some quad panels out of it mm -hmm. just a second mm -hmm. and i already have divided and got the data but to get the crucial thing if mm -hmm. that is time <laughs> we'll see i'm just starting it now so let's see the uh huh okay so that's pretty much it nice go ahead okay. thanks you can see yeah um this is a a grid shell and uh, um this this code um uh, i can change the the numbers of uh, um i i don't know speaking english this this term um the the thickness and the height and the the this 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 cross section dimensions yes and the the, the this um it's in, in cash um um a percentage de corte perpendicular and the, the, this the, um here uh, i put a uh, a uh, union rabo de angorinha and to connect the the station but uh, i i need to to test this this root caramba but uh, i don't know how but your code in this geometry uh to model it you need to to have the lines that define this form i i i, I did a draw in, in autocad that i i i i put the 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 uh, facial lines medium and the, this and this uh -huh. and the, i i i i had this this draw um, yes with these lines in the same plane okay. uh you can model uh in a simplified way you can consider the thickness on the high on the mm -hmm. height that is not cut mm. you can simulate on this uh in a simplified way did did you understand without the the cut yeah when do you have you know, when when you uh where you do the cut mm -hmm. to connect each bar you have uh you get off some material right yes yeah. so the rest of the height mm -hmm. could be in a simplified manner the height of the bar for ah, okay. structure modeling ah okay do you know yes is one one uh, uh, way to do this it's not so realistic yes but you you get a response of that and the, the, this this connection the, this uh, the, not the same way because here we have the, the connection which connection no it not connection and uh, in cash uh, do you know rabo de angorinha is like this yes uh it's a hinge it's a joint so you have to 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 have a, a node in this point 
And uh, the two bars that connect in this point, look at me. Mm -hmm. It has a, a hinge or one of them. So you can have the, this type of connection. But you need to subdivide the because I, I guess the 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 grid the, the 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 net surface is made of numbers curve I guess that you have. Yes, but I I, I needed the the, the, the segment segments line, and yeah. I I put the the nodes in the AutoCAD in, in each union. Uh, I, I have a, a segment of lines. It's not a line, okay. a continual line. Okay. But uh, uh, if he, uh, for, for this, 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 this kind of uh, union, I understand that you said I will consider the... The, the continuous part, the continuous height. Yes, but uh, the, the, the height uh, is the... the a half height, okay? Yeah. But for for this, I, I will consider the, the half height too. You can uh, use two types of uh, cross section. Mm -hmm. The cross section around the, the crossing, that's mid height. You know? Yes. And uh, along the panel, you have the entire height. Because you have to break in uh, several segments, right? Yes. The segments that is around the crossing, you consider half height. Okay. In other places, entire height. Oh. Did you understand? Yes. So to do this without disparate, <laughs> <laughs> is uh, an organized data structure, you know? Um, uh, it's not so difficult because if you have each curve in, uh, mm, let's see, you can, you can do this in, in uh, several ways, okay? But you can identify some pattern and filter it. For example, you can filter from the nodes that is in the crossing and select or filter the segments that it's closer to the node crossing. So you put on the right and uh, give to them the mid height cross section. And the other ones, the entire height, for example. Mm -hmm. But it's a way to, to, to consider cross section in, at half in the crossing and the other ones complete height, mm -hmm. okay? Okay. So I, I think that's a, it's a good way to uh, approximate this, this, uh, this situation. So um, um, you have to pay attention in the division. So you have resolution in this curvature. Okay? Okay. Um, I will try the 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 line is uh, the WG line is to to Reno and uh, connect the your code. Yes. Yeah. So you can you can uh, uh, I guess the the main challenge is to process the geometry because when you get the segment lines separated it's just to connect the code that i give to you mm -hmm. it's simply like that because the challenge uh, is greater to process and organize the data structure of the geometry so you can 
connect uh, the things where it has to, to be connected. You know? So I suggest to, to you to, to, have, to, 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 to concentrate your focus on separate the segments of the mirror of the panel and the cross section, mm -hmm. the point of crossing the bars. And everything uh, is going to be done after that. You know, yeah. uh, um, um, try to give, uh, 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 get the curves in the rhino and get it inside the grasshopper. So this processing, it's better to do in grasshopper than rhino or autocad, you know? Do you know how to, to put it in the, in, in the grasshopper? From Rhino, from Rhino. Mm, no. Uh... Uh, in in the curve. Um, so get the the lines, the the curves, the grid curves, and I can help you after that. Okay. 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 Thank you. <laughs> In, in this uh, Mirella file, uh, I was taking a look earlier. Uh, and the thing is, when, when I reviewed the, those curves, curves that are nerves, not, not little segments, right? Uh, I can divide them and do a polyline with those segments. Uh -huh. But the thing is, the lines that are crossing them won't won't share the the nodes. I think that was the where I it settled. it has. So this is why I suggest to process everything in in the grasshopper because you have tools that can mm -hmm. identify the, the crossing, mm -hmm. and you consider a, a vex or a node there. Ah, okay. Okay. Uh, I guess that is available all the, the functions or, or tools to process this geometry. Mm -hmm. Mirella, I guess that not only the curves, but the surface, but you can make a surface, don't worry. With these lines, make a surface is very useful because with the surface you have the normals. So you can orientate the bars and the model. This, this, this draw, I, I started by a surface and after I, I put... Uh, um, yes, the surface is better to, 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 to process from surface because from surface you can subdivide you can subdivide parametrically. So it's better to face than the curves because you can obtain the curves parametrically in which uh, aperture that you want or find the better one. You know? Yes, I, I will use uh, the, the surface that uh, I, I did this mm -hmm. draw, okay? I, yeah. I, I, I have this surface and uh, um, I, I will, um, I don't know where this, I will try to, to open. I, <laughs> and uh, I, I show to you. Okay. Felipe, uh, I, I have, have this, this draw. I will show you that you you say if I could use the surface or I need to do another. Okay. This 
this is the, the first surface. And uh, I, I did the surface and it, after I put this, this fold to, to do a good shell. Do you, do you think that I, I use this surface to? Yeah, actually, it seems to me to be a B wrap. Um, can you start the grasshopper? Yes. They. Wait. So if there. if it's not a problem. If if you if you. If it is an B wrap, you can extract the upper surface, for example. Okay. From, from the surface, you can subdivide it. Uh, I, when and, I, and, I obtain, and obtain the curves. From the curves, you can subdivide the curves to obtain the segments. Mm -hmm. I, I I draw the the curve and another curve in the in front of I I I need a surface first after I extrude to to the, the past shell and after I I put this code to to do a grid shell I don't know if this surface is <laughs> it's okay to to work. In a structural sense, you, you, you say? Yes. Yes, because um, um, it has some... Uh, uh, design framework discussion on that. You know? Mm -hmm. Because uh, it has a, a, a discussion that... Uh, Lawson or Oxman on this, this uh, form making or form fine, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. because or bottom up or, or top down, you know, because you, you can start the design and de deliberate it in a de deliberated way, proposing a shape. This is the shape. Yes. No matter what. This is the shape and go on. And what, what does this, uh, this imply? Uh, the implication of that is you don't know if it is suitable or not. So you can verify if it is, go ahead or optimize, op optimize the, the subdivisions of the panels and the cross-section uh, shapes and height and everything. Choose, choose a, a material from that. You can do this. Or you can find the shape yes. and everything parametrically. Yeah. It's another, it's, it's more it's, from fine. It's another way. Yes. Yeah, it's another way to design. Okay. Yes. So in this way of form find approach, you can start everything from grasshopper. It's just, yes. it's just a discussion. Okay. Okay. Because uh, in the topological uh, comprehension, the connection between geometric uh, entities, um, the generation is more affordable for design. So, because everything is connected already, yeah. and you have an automation for automation of it. So uh, get in this menu geometry in the uh, this black mm. on the left. Yeah. Uh, click click on the to, to drop down. 
the photo. Yes. Uh, you have B rep on the right in the mirror in the middle. Yes. Yeah. Click on that. Click on that. Put it on the screen. Yes. Uh, click with the right button on this and set one B rep. Yes, is a rat. <laughs> put 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 the mouse over this component. It's a rat. So go to the menu in the upper menu. That's it's on P, but go to S. One, two, three, four, five, six, six one. Yes, six. Yes. Uh, this on fire on the left, this exploded the wrap. Yeah. Yeah. The construct, yes. Put on the right of this and connect. Yeah. Yeah. Put the mouse on faces. So you have the list with all the surfaces that um uh, form this be wrap so um do a double click in the canvas for me yeah and this is it um list item yeah this one connect faces on list And uh, double click on the canvas. The, uh, type zero. No, no. No, no, zero. Zero and uh, uh, the the minor sign. This is minor. It's it's a, it's a, almost um, a, a arrow yeah. to the left. Here. Great Here. and uh, five. Enter. Connect it on index. Click on list item component on the middle. Click, click. Ah, here. Yeah. So better than that, click with the right button and the first component, first component. Here? Yeah, right button. Internalize, internalize data in the bottom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so all the geometry is on the grasshopper now. So you can, uh, on the Rhino, file and new. New. Uh, put meet uh, large objects. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you, you can. It's it's so, it's in, uh, in somewhere. You can find the geometry. It should be there. Oh. Yeah, okay. there it is. You can that you can the, do a double click on the name top here yeah uh, on the the left left up corner double click in the name top ah okay so in the bottom you can click on perspective in the bottom of the okay. yeah so find it yeah it's better to to see so this is the wrap and click now in the list item. So you have the, this is the, the, the bottom surface, I guess. With the number slide, you can see which surface of the wrap you have. So click on the right button, select the, 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 the first two components and another one. Click with shift. Ah, shift. Ah. Okay. 
and uh, click in the on the canvas with the right button. Uh, preview off. So this is a surface there. Give by list item. So Mirella, I did something that might help you. I'll show you. Oh. You see my screen? Yes. It's very simple. It's not actually it's divide the face. You see? Mm -hmm. And all, uh, actually, with it, you already have the crossing points. OK? OK. And uh, with this, you have the pole lines on one direction and another direction. Uh, it's not actually pole lines that you have, I guess. But uh, interpolate because this is uh, this is kind of uh, straight segments between nodes and is not what you want, you know, right? But you can do this, and this will be covered. Oops. So this is good, cool. okay. Right? Yeah. Um, and you can select the cross here and maybe break on it to have the curves between. So after you can subdivide inside this and select the first one and the last one to be with half height and then another ones with entire height. Understand? Yeah. Um, uh, and here you have the, the surface completely parameterized. You can do it by hand. OK? Yeah and the subdivision here, right? Um, and you can um, uh, relate this length to this number, not to input the number, but a, 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 a dimension, because you can do this. And you have here all the the edge curves, and you 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 can have the length of it, and you can find the number from the dimension of the the panel. It's not actually exact dimension, but you you can obtain the number from the dimensions. Okay, mm -hmm. is another trick. Try from here, right? Okay. Yeah, thank you. You can you can uh, make a print screen. Maybe it can help. Okay, thank you. I have a small doubt. Hello? Yeah. So, not. so there's a component called support, right? Support component in Karamba. I'm sorry, which component? Support. I didn't understand. Sup support. It's support, your, support. Yeah, support. Yeah, support. Yeah. Yeah. So it has that uh, six buttons beneath it, uh, the translational XYC and rotational XYC.
can you tell me like where exactly should we use the uh, turn on these buttons should it be turned on all six should be turned on every time or is there any conditions for it yeah t means translation r means rotation right oh, yeah so this is related for each node that you are fixing that is support yeah okay so when you mark, uh, let, let's consider that this is X, right? Yeah. When you mark at, at TX, this node that is getting into the support component, okay. it's fixed the translation in X. Okay, got it, got it. And Y? It's and fixed. Z. So if I'm turning it on, then it's fixed, right? The R is rotating. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess the base of the columns must be all of them. Yeah. So you can use more than one component of support, right? OK, OK. And connect on this all fixed to the base, the nodes of the base of the columns. Mm. I guess that the beam that connects, no, is that, is, is the, the volume one supports, the base of the columns. And you, it, mark, you mark uh, uh, all of them. Got it, got it. Got it. OK. So only if the support has some movement, we need to uh, turn off the buttons, right? which won't happen in any case. Sorry, I didn't understand. Like, uh, for example, a column base is always steady, right? Uh, so all those buttons will be turned on. In what conditions, like, uh, this uh, rotation and all will go off? Like, will there be any movement in supports? Is there any example where movements or rotation movements or something like that when it comes to support i'm not sure that i understand but when you have <clears throat> uh, you can have uh, support without moments in the base of the column but you must in this case to be to have actually uh, a connection in beam and column with yeah. a moment transfer. Okay. And I don't know if you, if you have on this case. If you have on this case, that beam is completely fixed in the connection of the top of the column, you can release the, the rotation, the base of the column, right? Okay. Got it. Felipe? Yes, go ahead. Some questions, and I want to explain my idea. Okay. I'll share the screen. Oh, I'm gonna... So, I want to make like a refuge. And um, here I can control the, the dimensions. Mm -hmm. This is like the each one of these uh, geometries is the um, are the the frames. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to op optimize. Mm -hmm. It's not, I, I don't want to uh, find the form, just uh, like the, um, the dimensions of the, of the timber and, uh, and see how much um, structural resistance it will have. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, my question is that here I want to uh, have the, the top points of each one of these uh, frames. Mm -hmm. And I use a list item, but 
Um, I don't remember how to replicate this in the other frames because I have all of them and I, to be more efficient and don't copy and go frame by frame. Is there a way to take uh, all the frames in a, just one list and then take the like the first first actually second. actually i guess the the answer to your question is to put these frames on a data tree so the first one is always uh, the first one of all of all of that so antwire in the left the five yeah. antwire Uh, Antwine, I'm sorry. I type it? No, it, it was there. Where is it? In the left, the fifth. Antwine. This one. Yeah. So connect each each of that. In just one or in... Yeah. Uh... One... one yeah no like, no like in the or... next one yes so the, and i can the close it can close zoom zoom oh. zoom it more more yeah okay if it the number the number of uh just a moment inputs the number of frame is parameterized Yes. Um, uh, because because it if is, it is, this is not working. No, it, this is just a rotation. I decide to put seven. Seven is fixed. Yeah. It's okay. Fixed. Because uh, otherwise, this this path this will not work. Okay. Okay. No, it just it's not parameterized. This. Okay. Uh, Okay. I decide a, 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 a degree okay, no and yeah. Okay, no problem. So connect the, this output on this. Yeah. So let's see. Uh, yes. Nice. You can uh, parameterize the number and store in the data tree one. Nice. Nice. I, I don't understand. I didn't understand. Uh, depending mm -hmm. on the programming, you can parameterize the number of frames in a data structure to have the similar result that you already have now. Okay. Okay, but you can for the in the 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 the, the two version, the version mm -hmm. number two. Can can be like that. Can be like that, yes. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, so yeah. the second item, you have if you have a copy of this stop point, you you can have the another point with item uh, yes. with another number. Co copy this group. Copy yeah, this. I can take. Yeah, like this, for example. Yeah. But I, I want to use the, um, this point right here to join the, um, the structure. So the top point and also the... Yeah, I guess if you modify the, the item right the, in the list item, uh, yes, the, the second parameter of this component item. Yeah, but um, the, um, the second one is... Is this complete uh, line? It's not like cut. It. Cut. I will show. I will show. Yeah. Uh, Maybe I can I can change it from the. So yeah. Yeah, it's not that. This so, one is the the whole. Yeah, there is a problem. You have to 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 have a, a point, in the connection of lines there. Okay. Okay. So, so it's two segments, not not a one. Okay, I'll do it. Nice. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome. Um, how I stop?
Great day. Thank you. Wait, can I share mine now? Your, your, okay. Um, okay, so here I I left them all here already, but it, I have I have some doubts today. Okay. Take care of. Okay, so first here I got my my geometry. So this is the plugin that I was talking to you about. It's actually called GeoGym. So here I can control like the, the origin for it, the radius, its frequency, and so on. Um, yeah, so here I have my lines, right, separated here, and also the supports under here. Perfect. OK, so. So you have all the spans, all the panel size parametric parameterized uh, what are spans can you say it in portuguese uh, you have your dome with all spans spans is the radius of this hemisphere uh, yeah because you like, can uh, want to know where do we hear you about mean? about the scale of that Yeah, so span is the size of it? Span is vão. Ah, okay, easier. <laughs> uh, so yeah. with optioneering. Machine engineering is hard already. Look at yeah. that. Look at that. With optioneering and a catalog of cross-section, you can know with the maximum span or the better span that you can achieve this structure with this cross-section table. For example, by wood or a cross-section of tubes. A tube catalog, an aluminum tube, catalog yeah you can input and find which bet which are the best span the span that presents or exhibits the lowest ratio or rate of material consumption yeah with and this this catalog are the um, the types of material that i get like alum with an aluminum catalog it's the the thickness and the types of um, a shop they, right they, they, they the diameter and the thickness of the the wall of the tubes mm. you know because okay. you, you cannot you cannot say it i want to, uh, a diameter of yeah. 10.537 centimeter. It's not possible. It's not uh, 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 buildable. Yeah. Do you have you know? an aluminum one there? Sorry? Do you have an aluminum one? An aluminum? Uh, in, a, in the internet, you can find these catalogs in PDFs. Okay. Right? Uh, for steel, uh it, it, it's very easy if you put catalog aluminum tubes or steel tubes on google it has a lot of fabricators that deliver pdf catalogs the problem is that you have to to, to get this information put in excel yeah it's two columns the column of diameter and the column of thickness transform this excel file in the csv because it's better read it and put on the cross-section definition in the component uh, cross-section component of caramba 
Okay. Got it? Yeah, there are also square or rectangular elements, yeah, yeah. right? I'll, uh, yes. Okay. For the uh, square or rectangular, you have to orientate the normal. For the circular one, doesn't matter. <laughs> you know? Yeah. No, I, I have the bars here already. That's nice. Great. Okay. Great. Great. Uh, okay, so line beam. I have my lines here. The orientation with the normal vector that I asked. Perfect. For. Perfect. Okay. That's all set. And then for supports, here are my points. Okay. And, support, and then I have to add the conditions, right? Yeah. So it's always. The, I, I suggest to use TX, TY, and TZ. Which are for translation. Okay. You are fixing the the translation movements and get the 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 rotation freely, free to rotate. Because it's easier to to do the connection in the basis without without rotation fixing. And you do not need to fix the rotations for this structure. Okay. Wait, so the, if I check here, is it being fixed or not? Being fixed. Yeah, if you check, you're fixing the okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, next, load. Uh, I only use gravity for now because that's what you recommended. So that we go. Okay. Okay. Go on, go on. Uh, and then why? Uh, why do you need the zero and one here for L case? What does it to, do? <coughs> sorry. To differentiate the load cases. One load case is when the wind is not occurring you can uh, uh, call it as load case zero, right? Zero is without wind, is that it? Did you freeze? Yeah. You're frozen. Yeah, now you're back. Okay, so zero is for uh, uh, is without wind. Yeah. Okay. So you can you can avoid this number, for instance. Just then, disconnect. Just disconnect these numbers. This number component on load case, for instance. Okay. And just gravity for now. Oh, so you don't need that? Not for instance. Not for now. Okay. When, when you apply wind, you, you do that. You can type control, control Z because you, you can use that later. Right? Okay, I'll leave, okay, I'll leave it here for now then. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Uh, um, okay, so for gravity, I just need that, right? Yeah, because the, the the standard one is zero. Okay. Um right, cross section. So here, yeah, so this is where the catalog catalog goes, right? Right. I just said a a parameter here, but what what you get in in height up with it and lower with it is the sizes that I used here to make the bars. So oh, the... I have I have a question. I have a question okay. because you do not you do not need to model the thickness of the bars. Okay, let's go back then. Yeah. The the, the lines. For now, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Because the 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 caramba, uh, will you will deliver to you this. But okay. Uh, they okay. output they output this thickness this model. Ah, uh, okay. So 
You don't need to, to, to model it. Here. Don't need to extrude. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So okay. Yeah. So let me get this out of here. Okay. Perfect, perfect. And this also comes from the catalog then. Yeah. Yeah. Like for instance, for, yeah, for instance, you, you can you can let let it be. Right. Give me more. And then well, finally material, which I didn't know how to set it. Uh you need to to get depending on the material, the 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 elasticity constants Wait. so the catalog the catalog that you, we uh you will provide to you the cross-section dimensions uh with a good catalog they they also it will also inform you the material constants and that goes in which young models that is elasticity it's... model yes okay and in plain in transverse it's related to this so if you find young models you find everything so you need to to find in catalog young models specific weight and you yield strength also these three parameters is it on catalog also these numbers yeah so let me when, just here yeah, yeah modulus. You, you can you can you can um let it be for now because the 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 standard is still so find the catalog and i help you to put the numbers on it okay i'll work on that for now and you know Okay, so you have so so now you can connect all of this on assemble. Yeah, I left it here. I'll I'll finish setting everything up and then I'll I'll do it all together. Okay. Right. right. Thanks. Welcome. Hello, Mirella. Hi, Felipe. Uh, are you there? Yes. Yes. I, I'm having fun with your problem here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. We, we step it here, right? Yes. So these are at the crossing, at the middle, mm -hmm. at the crossing, mm -hmm. at the middle. Right? Yes. Whatever, whatever is the subdivision, you have at the crossing. Or at the mirror, you know, wherever yes. the subdivision is. And uh, if you can uh, deform also. Right? Yes. So, from this, you have the, the, the lines to, to, to put in line to beam component. The next challenge is, where is the hinge, the joint that is here? Yeah. So, you have to decide maybe is depending of the length of the the bar. The yes, the yes. bar yes. So yes. from here, because you have 
this lamps here, not actually here, but here you have the lens. So 8.098 and depending of this length, you can subdivide and put the, the point somehow. So you can consider the approximately the hinge to identify the nodes that is here. So you can find the nodes is next to it, you mm -hmm. know? Yes. Uh, when you increase, you, you, you get it better because it's uh, not so much different here from here and the exact point uh, where the, the joint uh, is. You know, but this this is the way. Okay. Okay. If you if you want to 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 make from this, <coughs> go ahead. You got it. Yes. Yes. Is 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 wider, if you want, okay? Okay, thank you, Felipe. Felipe, I need some, some help. Okay. So here's the structure, the, but I'm trying to change the material. Mm -hmm. And I want to make it uh, from timber or pine wood. Uh -huh. So here I search in the um, I, I search in the internet, uh, and I have to change uh, which um, which factor this one, the FCK. Yes. So this one is the one that is specific from. Concrete. Uh, so you, you can avoid all of this that is in the left of the caramba component, the material component. For wood, you will you you will directly input E G one two G three and F Y values. And so name family name it this is this is uh, it's not important to calculation. It's just kind of a label. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so you have to 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 get the this one? Ma material constants. Do you have this information from a catalog, for example? Mm -hmm. If if it, yes. But. Um... How can I know if the in the catalog that you sent us um, there is the the material that I want? Mm, no, you have to. I, I just have to search. To search. In the, yeah, in you the, have to search with an, um, a fabricator or something like that. Okay, but that number that I have to that I have to search is this one. The FC. Mm. No, actually, because it's, it's a concrete on the right. Go to the right on the component. Okay. Yeah, FY for timber uh, probably is FC. Let's it's a concrete. So your catalog should inform FC, E, G12, and G3. And gamma, that is specific weight. So the catalog, most of them, most of it, uh, will provide the specific weight E and FC that you input in FY, right? 
Yes. This one, but uh, okay. This three information, this three information, F C E, F C E, and uh, gamma. Yeah. That is yeah. specific weight. You can find a good catalog of timber material. Okay. If you if you don't, uh, some books or design codes, timber design codes, provide these values. There. Yeah, it's it's okay, okay now. Yes. So you can optimize that. Because it's 7.3 in normal stress, 1.1, 33 in the worst case. Yes. You got it? So you yes. can uh, get a, 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 a better cross section. Yes. So you so don't that, have yeah. any dimensions on cross sections. So I suggest you to find a catalog or a seller of Right, this yeah. kind of material to 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 see which dimension is available on the market. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll search in, in the maybe in the local market. <laughs> yeah. And also then uh, because I can keep changing like the dimensions. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. And after uh, I can put everything, all these co components to Galapagos, so he will find like the optimized. Yeah, uh, you can already uh, select the cross section, select these cross section sliders. This ones? Yeah, select it. No, select it. Uh, click on it. With shift, click on another. Mm -hmm. uh, click in the sliders that model the the whole model right here yeah select it with shift go to the galapagos and click on the right button and you know yeah selected the sliders oh perfect much easier uh you click select the slider or or sliders all oh. all oh. No, it was the right is the selected sliders because, but you, you have to select it again. But I it, because they selected everything, I guess. But it was now it's uh, select sliders. Ah, okay. I did right. so fitness you connect to these number components. This one? No. Yeah, yeah, this? yeah, but not like this. Yes, yes, go in the middle. Yes, great. Uh, connect the, go to the assemble, assemble, assemble component of caramba, caramba. Right here. Yeah, the mass, connect the mass on the Python script. No, on the symbol. Oh. Yeah, the mass output. Yes. This yeah, this okay. one. Yeah. Two. Python components closer to. Yes. Yes. In mass. mass. Yes. And this division was. Um, it's not necessary? Not to optimize. If you want to. Search for. Uh, for opt or optioneering, yes. So I suggest you to, to, yeah, it's okay. You can run like this. Double click, double click the Galapagos now. Click on the server, on the server, yes. Mm -hmm. Click on start server. I will save maybe. Yeah, we will mm. <laughs> go ahead <laughs> and Maybe save. Maybe we'll so. Yeah. Let's see. Click on the, you, you see the clock on the right top? 
This Click one? on the left one. The left one. No, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Here you go. This is to find all the parameters, okay? And uh, including the dimension of the no, but not the dimension of the um, the cross section is oh, section the section also. Yeah, yeah. But, but it's, it's still big. It's like thirty centimeters. Is like big piece of wood. <laughs> I will yeah. need a big piece of wood. Yeah, you can turn it a little bit yeah. more. Okay, but I this is the way. Yeah. yeah. You can stop if you want, just just to, to see how how it gets, okay? Mm. Okay, below. Click OK Wait. in the bottom, okay. yeah. Go go see the, the design ratios. Yeah, it's very very low because you, you, you have to Change the cross section. The cross section uh, uh, get a, a, to limit also the 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 range of the spans mm -hmm. and the range of the cross section. So the the search will be in the domain that's more likely to this yeah. situation. Okay, okay. Ex exper experiment it and make some runs and have okay. fun. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for the help. Uh, are you the book is really useful for, for design without a structural engineer background to have an overview? Oh, take a look at that. Uh, James on the wood, yeah. Loads, yeah, exactly. Oh, perfect, Ayub, thank you. This reading or some reference like Ayub uh, sent on this link, it's essential to understand these detailings, these this informations, okay? It's an obligatory reading, a further reading. Because you understand this, the, these parameters, because if you don't use a co co coherent numbers and material that you simulate in, your response is not reliable to predict the behavior. Got it? So you have to be careful to mix these numbers because they must be coherent between each other. Got it? Yeah. For architects, it's like those series of books, uh, practical uh, structural design for dummies. <laughs> yeah. Maybe exists also. I don't know if exists. Yeah. 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 But uh, um, a good catalog provides these numbers. These books uh, helps you to understand uh, which means each of these parameters, right? And helps to understand where is it on the catalogs, this information, the name of the parameter and so on, right? Felipe. Go for it. Hi. So I've been working with Mirella to do uh, those those bamboo structures and and I tried to take from the point where you you fin you 
you stopped your definition with her this morning. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think we do have a, a little a small problem because the, that surface division that you took U and V, uh, let me share my screen. I think it's easier. Okay. Okay. So the thing is in her in her definition the the surface is okay. Okay, so this is what we got, right? Uh -huh. The problem is that since the surface is like a little bit tilted, I don't know, uh -huh. uh, we would have the intersection between the those, those pieces like this. And what we wanted was to do like orthogonal, this kind of joint instead of, of having them. I see. Yeah, so I tried to fix that and I did, uh, uh, like you can see, I don't know if, if this is the easiest way, but um, I, got, I, I kind of, I took the surface, like to explain, the the rack back to the surface. Okay. And then I I took the four. So the these four points. And build like this. I rebuild these these small curves that respond to the the height and length of this surface. Uh -huh. Then I then I divided it uh -huh. by a number that we will be able to control afterwards. And and I build these planes, and I'm now intersecting. Perfect, perfect. The plane, right? Right. With the surface, and then I got the curves that we wanted, which are perfect. Okay. This. The thing is, from this point forward, that I, that I'm having trouble because, first of all, um, this this point list. It's not, it's not organized in a way yeah. that I can build this curve again with, with uh, straight segments. Uh -huh. And if I, for example, get this curve and divide it and divide them. Yeah, okay, okay, J just, just a pause. Mm -hmm. From the, the 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 curves, try to use my code from that. From yeah, from this, book, from this, this try to use the code that that I provide. I think that that you can. Um, Like no, it, that, it, that that I sent to to that I showed ah, because okay. uh, this 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 uh, this crossing point is input. This crossing point is input to to divide the curves. Okay. It's shatter. So you mean? <laughs> Let me share the my my screen to explain you. But maybe this, maybe this was this one, right? Yeah, this one. And then I, uh, I can take maybe the closest point. Yeah, I think that exactly. was what I was trying to do. Okay. Yeah. 
from from this try try from this okay i'll give I, it a I try think, yeah okay Felipe, can you help me a little bit? Okay. So uh, I want to incorporate this point on curve, like this point, that um, because I'm I'm modif I can modify it, like this is sliders in the Galapagos, but um, I can't, uh, I don't put this, this is lighter in the Galapagos. I don't know if I can um, incorporate. I uh, think, I think it's not possible, but uh, you can do similar thing, uh, double click on the canvas. Here? Yeah. Uh, evaluate curve. Right. Yeah. Connect the, the line on C and uh, right click on C and parameterize. And uh, uh, click on a slide within 0, 0.0 and 1. So, uh, type zero point uh, zero mino no 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 mino it's 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 arrow to the left again again so zero, zero, zero. yes arrow to the left arrow to the left yeah it's a sign of mino uh, yeah no no let me find it. <laughs> no, I, <don't> <laughs> I have my my keyboard in English, so okay. Sh should 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 have this. Uh, it's, it's almost a shift comma or shift point. No. no. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so you can you can edit. Yeah. yeah. No. You can edit the slider that's already exists. Yeah. yeah. So, zero. Zero point zero. And one. Right. Okay. Nice. Connect it. Connect it in T. Okay. Click. Click on this component. On the yeah. component. Mm -hmm. And uh, move the the slider. Move the slider. No, 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 no. Just move the slider. Now click on component. Move one? the slider. Move the slider. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. You see? Yes. Yes, yes. Yes. Is that it? So yes. I guess that you don't want from zero to one. Maybe no. from point two to point eight. I don't know. Yeah. Two to point. Uh, you have to put one yeah. one more digit. Uh, above instead one instead one uh, consider two okay. uh, and digits above above yeah yeah okay. yeah two. two yeah okay okay so. okay is that that's it yeah no 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 that's it okay okay so you have your it's point. It's a point connect yeah yeah. Move the slider. That's it. Yes. That's what I want. So this slider, uh, you can connect to, to, to Galapagos. Yeah. And I can just... No, no. You have to select okay. it, it, it's, 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 feed for, it's for feedback. It's not feed forward. The, the simple way is like this with okay. shift. Or select the slider that you want and select uh, sliders. But I, I can we, use yeah the... yeah with shift like this. Yeah, that is yes. Okay. I don't know why this um, these are not working. 
Well, I don't know if they are working. Uh, I think that you don't need it, for instance. Um, uh, in, uh, otherwise, you, you want to, to, to perform the, the optioneering. If you want to optioneering mm -hmm. to connect the, the line, um, uh, give a zoom for me. Oh, zoom, zoom, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in uh, mm -hmm. on, the, on the left to, to see, to see. Yeah. This left one is length that you, you can connect directly on L. So the C connect to lines the before the, the, the subdividing. Before the subdividing lines connect on this length. Before the subdividing. Before subdivided. Yeah. Like. Find, find, find it. It's on the left, on your model. On the left. I think like all the segments? No. Because it's not the, the, the length, actual length. Yeah, I think um, I think I'll, it's I'll search it. Yeah. Um, I think it's it's left, left, left. Left on this, left. Like, yeah, I think it's maybe here. This is a frame, like the yeah, like the complete, but without the the so, yeah. So the problem is you have to add it because you have uh, a lot of class of bars, right? You have the tilted bars, you have uh, a lot of classes. You have the yeah. radio, mm -hmm. radio, yeah. radial bars. So you have L1, L2, L3, L4, L whatever. So you have to edit the Python script to have these lengths to build the optioneering table, right? Okay. And I yeah. can yeah. I have to insert like L L1 and modify the, the code. The Python, yeah, the Python script. If you are not into to Python, leave it to mm -hmm. further for the uh, discovering. Yes. So get get into only to the, the mm -hmm. optimizing that it's already working. Okay. This is my suggestion. Right. And, and, and one more thing is that uh, how we can see the the optimized, uh, like the, the best one or the best? Uh, double click on it. Uh, solvers. When you start uh, this, okay. the, 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 you, you will receive a list. Yes. And the bottom right, okay. with, yeah, with the the instances, the solutions. There you go. So this is the last generation list of individuals. Each individual is an instance of the model, right? Do, okay. do you understand an instance? Instance is a particular configuration of the parametric model, right? Yeah. Yes. So the, the first one is the best one for this generation. So you now this are one. in the third generation. Yes. So the best one is the first one. So perhaps... So always you... the, be the best one is going to be the first one here? Yeah. From each iteration. Yeah. For each generation. Right? If, so if I wait like, I don't know, five minutes, the first one here should be the best. Yeah. Or, or at least one of the best. Uh, uh, it, it will already uh, uh, 
gets in a plateau. If you if you click on the this radiative symbol, this one? No, no, in the, no, this one. Yeah, five clicks on this, five or ten clicks. So you you get uh, produce kind of a mess in the evolution. And it helps to, to get a, 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 a optimize more the, the search, you know? Um. All right. One three one. Click again on 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 the on the right radioactive. Here? Yeah. Click again. One. Ten ten clicks. Ten or fifteen. Click a click a lot. <laughs> click a lot. I did like fourteen. Because yeah. what is this? This is a, a, a additional mutations that can help to improve the searching. So produce kind of a mass, a shake, like that, that. shake the table or shake the box, shake the world. Okay. And uh, might help to, to, to find a, a better solution. The best one is one, one to one. So wait a little bit. I guess it's not a, a evoluta better than this. Try to stop. Stop. So this one. If you click on another one and hang state, click on the hang state, and you see which one is it. Uh, okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. Also, I can see here the. Yeah. This one. Uh, it, it's very nice because this is very nice, right? Because it's yeah. 83, 8, 80, 83, and yeah. 75. Fine displacement. Yeah. Right. It's a good one. It's a good one. Yeah. Okay. I'll keep playing. A little bit more. Yeah, having fun. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, when, when are we supposed to present the results? Uh, in the second part, uh, 11, uh, uh, half, half an hour. Okay. I just, I'm, I'm running my, uh, the, 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 the optimization and it's pretty slow. Maybe I should reduce the number of, uh, I'm very curious about your project. <laughs> I'm looking forward. Yeah, well, don't uh, keep you, don't keep. <laughs> <laughs> so, people, uh, in a half an hour, we'll start to present the final results, right? And we we'll present uh, five minutes. And after that, uh, we close the, the workshop with a, a statement of yours, how it goes, and the feedback from me can be like this. Sounds like a plan. So is that it's in a half an hour, we start the presentation of five minutes for each person. Uh, the final results. Okay. Nice. Oh, Philippe? Say it. Yeah, I was just working on it. Let me share my screen. Yeah. Yeah. So I think everything is looking perfect, but all these beam displacement, it can be somewhere like 90, right? It's still in one digit. Slab displacement. I, I didn't get your question, sorry. Okay. So, 
it's it's in one digit right 7.9 yeah yeah so what should i do now for achieving the maximum efficiency this, yeah this this means that you 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 have too much cross section you uh, if you if you get the cross section uh, lighter okay. less cross section less dimensions this index goes up okay so okay then uh, on the left you can uh, get lower thickness on members mm -hmm. okay and this and this and this design ratio goes up okay okay then and do you think this looks correct uh, just wait a second uh, actual stress and utilization yeah. it's 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 look beautiful for me looks good looks good okay so if i'm going to construct it actually so these two columns are completely kind of useless or something because not taking any stress <laughs> uh, it's not it's not actually useless but you have the path of forces going may in major direction on the 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 minor ones okay this is kind of geometry uh, thing about the behavior of the structure so okay, okay. if you optimize it i guess with different labels of the these four columns two columns huh? the 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 length ones and another label for the 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 minor ones uh -huh, right okay because the left ones uh could be one. more uh more with less cross section okay like slender slender yeah, yeah okay, well, more it. slender okay and you can achieve that uh put in different cross section using different label for them okay 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 so only for these two i need to give separate cross section and feed it inside yeah. get it yeah and okay so another doubt i just want to know what all should be plugged in this one you have to select the sliders that will control it you, you you can try you can Game try sp you can try spine but i suggest you to try the cross section okay. select all the slide of cross section um and 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 the sliders and click on the right button on galapagos and select cross uh, i suggest that you, you select also the resistance of the concrete uh i selected the thickness of the concrete but if you select the strength i i, I think that is might good sorry might be good. if you select the slide of strength of concrete might be good also okay okay yeah left okay. left 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 okay right this this these two ones Select okay, these two. F FCK. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. And right click on Galapagos. Uh -huh. Selected sliders. Selected sliders. Got it. Fitness, and you go to the number. Number. And also, I want to add another question. What about the reinforcement details? Reinforcement, it's another step. It's the next step when you have the solution of the thicknesses. Okay. So the reinforcement part comes after this one. Yes, usually yes. Okay. Okay, got it. So now I uh, now I can run this, right? Yeah. Give it a try. Minimize, oh, minimize. Oh, oh, sorry. Options. Sorry. Options. Options. Minimize on fitness. 
Uh -huh. Great. So the start. Just a minute. Let me save this one. <laughs> to save, yes? Yeah. Save. Solver. Is, uh, is minimize? Is minimize? Is minimize? Yeah, it's options. Is Oops, I, because okay, you, okay. you cancel. Okay, solvers. Solvers. Start solver. Yeah. And if you click, button. yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> this is happening. It's not okay. It's converge. But you can. Um, I think define... I should have selected this pan. Yeah, you can. You can uh, define the range of the sliders also. Uh, but, but, it, but, it's, it. but it's working. It's working. Okay. So, will it show any? Why is it not showing? Uh, wait a little bit. This optimization is so cool. I can see it all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's very cool huh? to, to see this morphing. That's, that's true. So the variation depends on the range of number slider. Uh, click click on the radiative symbol. It's strange because it's not showing solutions. Oh, which one should I? Which one? Sorry? No, the radioactive, radioactive in the bottom, in the middle. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Click on this kind of five clicks or so ten. One, two, three. One, two, three. I click more than that. Okay, I'm back. Uh, try to stop. Yeah. I don't understand because in the below part is showing nothing. Okay. I don't know what's happening. Okay. But I, I, I downloaded this caliber Galapagos editor through TT toolbox. Is that right? Sorry? Uh, this component is a part of TT toolbox plugin, right? It came uh, with the the the, the <clears throat> with the Rhino. It's it's it should be working well. I don't know. Yeah, you can you can uh, uh, try it to put it and do the same again, selecting the sliders and everything, and erase this this other one. Could, could work. Let's see. Expand. Fight. What else? These cross sections. Okay, let me try with the minimum one first. Uh -huh. Selected slider. Yeah. Fitness to the number. And uh, just just a minute. Let me see what is the 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 design ratios. Okay. It's okay. okay. So it it's... went up. Okay. Yeah. I it was six or something. Yeah. Um. Let me see the material below. The if it's uh, uh, yeah the bottom. The bottom. Okay. Yeah. The bottom. The bottom. The bottom. 
Yeah, it's point ten. It's 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 okay. I think it's okay. Try it. Minimize. So start. And this one, right? Yeah. Oh, oh now, now it's okay. Uh, okay. So, will it stop eventually, or? Uh, wait, wait, wait a little bit. Okay. Give some clicks on the radioactive. Done. Wait a little bit. Okay, maybe you, you 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 have something. Try to stop and see how much is the design ratios. Twenty-seven. Yeah. Twenty-one. Yeah. Forty-five. Sixteen. Forty-five. Oh, ninety-three. 93. Yeah. yeah, it's good, huh? Yeah. It's the column. Sure. And buckling, it should be less than five, right? It should what? Sorry? Bu uh, buckling susceptibility. Yeah, it's very nice. It should be it should be below 100. 2.9 oh. is very it's very okay. Okay, okay, okay. I thought it should be okay. And the consumption is very nice. Below one uh, 0 0.1. 0 0.1 is a good reference. Mm -hmm. Nice. Cool. Cool. <laughs> okay, then. And uh, let me show to, to, to go to the, the to top of that. Top, top, and the above. top block. And uh, above, above, in the block, above, above it. Uh, yeah. Yes. This one? This one? Yes. Go to the. Go to the cross a select cross section to show. Yeah, so, on okay. this. Click on this. Click on the, the above also. Yes, on 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 the mesh output, on the mesh output, on the right of uh, this component mesh. Yes, on this uh, component. On this component. Okay, okay, okay. This mesh output. Yeah. Yeah. Click on the right button. Uh huh. Bake. Okay. Do the same with the the bottom one. Yeah. Okay. Um. Uh, click on this on the the right the right um. uh cylinder in the green that shows that shows only the rhinoceros uh sorry which one which one it has this cylinder in the bar of the button of to save and the grasshopper on the right right uh -huh. right yeah uh -huh. yeah yeah the green yeah. one the green one the green one the green green this one the green yeah Click on this okay. Okay, and okay. click and click uh, on the canvas, uh -huh. on the canvas of Grasshopper. Uh, yeah. yeah. 
So click on bottom of perspective on the rhinoceros. Yeah, it's already in the perspective. Yeah, but click on the in the arrow. arrow. Uh -huh, yeah, okay. and uh, render red. Click, yeah. So you can improve more. Yeah. Go go and the uh, layers on the rhinoceros. Yeah. Yeah. And you have the mat on the on the under the full, you have the material column. Click on this on the above. On not not on this, on the above, on the full layer. On the default layer. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Click on the full material. The first button above, click oh. on above it. On a, oh. yeah, use a new material. Import from material li library. library. Okay. Uh, architecture. Uh, wall, wall. Concrete. Select one. I suggest concrete light. Or dark, you can you can experiment and okay. Okay. It has a button so that okay. is okay, but it's not appearing because the resolution of your screen. Try enter. Oh sorry. I don't know if you close, if it works. Yeah, okay. Okay, I've been really struggling here with the engineering part of it, like, <laughs> the architecture, because honestly, like, and I'm struggling with the Excel part of it because it's not working. <laughs> I don't do Excel. Like, I don't know, the way that I referenced it in Grasshopper is not reading the same as yours, at least. Uh, um, okay, you can you can try it further. I can help you by mail, maybe. But for to you present, yeah, like because we, we are almost with not too much time, you can use a slider to define Okay. The, the, the cross section. I did right? manage to find here the catalog and then uh, finally got to organize it in an Excel file and then exported it as a CSV. But the way that it's reading here, look, it's not working the same. I tried it, but like, um, look, my values are like this. See? Yes, uh, click, click, click on right button on delimiter for me. Set text, put a, a, a point and virgula. Oh, oh yeah. Commit changes. There <laughs> you are. <laughs> Damn Excel. Yeah, but I guess that you have one column, right? It's kind uh, of strange. Uh, no, it's three. There's H, B, and T here, like zero. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Felipe, uh, which one is the component that I have to bake so I can see the, the structure like with the, the final result? The, the beam view and the shell view. In your case, beam view. You select the cross section to show cross section, right click and the mesh output and bake. If you don't find it, uh, share your screen so I can show you. Yes, please. So here? Uh, yeah, zoom in it. Um, so, uh, below, below, below. Uh, select cross section instead actual stress. Yeah, yeah, there. 
and right click on mesh output on this component. Here? Yeah. Right click, bake. Okay. That is. So you have to, to go to the, the layers of Rhino. Yeah. Uh, uh, stop to, to, to click on the, 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 the green uh, button on the right of Grasshopper. Yeah. Here? Yeah, here. Yeah, there. So go to the layers of Rhino. Wait, wait. I want to build this one too. Okay. So layers. Uh, no, no, it, it don't, it doesn't, it don't have the need to click to create oh, another okay, layer, but uh, you can del delete this. Um, yeah, um, I think uh, uh, get broader this this window of layers. Bigger? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So material, click on material on the default layer. Yeah, click on that. <clears throat> click on the full material, the, the, the bottom, yes, new, import, the first one, the mm. first one, import. Uh, oh, God. No, but I, I can me maybe make a render from, so, like, you, you want us to see that here in, the the structure in uh, made of of wood yeah but because when when you you select there i suggest you to to show it in an under format yeah uh wait so you have to to do the bake again but i don't know how to explain do you know how to 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 get under format? Go to the right. Go to the right. No. I uh, above a little bit. Above. 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 The yeah. Display scales. Deformation instead of hundred. In C? yeah, this one. Okay. So you have to to do again the bake. You have to delete that you have up there, and bake it again. Yeah, so, um, I want to delete everything. Yeah. So I don't know how to. Um, I will find out. <laughs> <laughs> you can use the, the, the you can use a, a paint or something that is already there. Right, but the texture yeah. when you create a new material, it opens uh, the directly. Let me see if I, I can help you. Yeah, I can do it in Keyshot, but maybe it will collapse my computer if I just have a, Grasshopper just a and Keyshot. Yeah, it. here is the the folder I will paste to you. On the chat. Oh, sorry. Try to find this folder. Okay. The, the archives with the texture might be there. With wood as kind of 100 texture of wood you can choose. Okay. Okay, I'll try. It's a app data ROM and MacNeil from from this on your computer. Okay. And, uh, for the users. Felipe here. So I only have the gravity loads. Do I also add point loads to the to the structure? Right here. You can uh, add to represent the cladding 
What is, what is cladding in Portuguese? Uh, is the surface that covers this void. Ah, o, o fechamento. Yeah. So you can copy this component of gravity. Copy it. Yeah, let me just... And change from gravity to point load. And you connect a uh, uh, Z vector, type Z, yeah. And click with right button of factor, expression, and type expression, minus X. This will account to down, right? Yeah. So connect it on force. And connect to a slider with a number maybe point, point 0.2. I suggest further to see how I made the on the grid shell for this, right? Yeah, this one, right? Yeah. Yeah, I saw that you added some point loads, so it's this one that you're. Yeah. Load that you... Yeah. So I use a tributary area or area of influence of each node on the surface. So for now, I, I, I suggest you to simplify and see this further in another situation, right? On your code, consider point one the point point load consider point one or point two it's okay in factor ah uh, here yeah so find the nodes all the <laughs> nodes find the, all the nodes saudi <laughs> thanks uh all the nodes uh that here Right, connect on post end. And connect load on with shift. Yeah, there you are. Okay, but uh, what expression did you use there? And why did you use that expression? Uh, because commonly you have the cladding with a weight per square meter, right? Mm. So if you have the weight per square meter of the cladding, you can find the point load by tributary area or the area of influence of each point. So if you have the area the that it's under the influence of each point you can multiply this area by the weight of the clad in per square meters if you, you multiply some kilonewtons per square meter by a square meter of the influence area you have kilonewtons right yeah and how do i know how uh, how much is that influence area? Um, if you have the medium size of the triangles. Ah, okay. So I have to get the area of each um, triangle. Uh, actually, not 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 uh, the medium is. Uh, let me see. Um, it's not the size of the triangle because the, the influence area of each node is an hexagon, right? Mm. The area of this hexagon is the influence area of each node. If you, if you 
Um, and the, 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 this hexagon is three, six triangles in this case. Is the almost the area of the half of six triangles. So catch the area of one triangle, multiply by six and divide, divide by two. Okay, so so three, three so three triangles basically. Right? Yeah. The same? It's an area of tri three triangles. Multiply it by the weight per square meter of the cladding, and you have the, the amount of point load. Understand? And that is the value that I'll use here as a factor. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And then here you added one more, you added just one for wind load. Because I saw the article that you made it, it was much more complex than this. Yeah. So I suggest, I suggest that for a further investigation, because you have to, 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 to see it uh, more carefully. But the, the principle is the same. You, you, you will, through a path that we will obtain, the point load that represents the wind load. I, and but this use... is like a simplified version of it. Yeah. This one here. Yeah. But I suggest that for, for the work on here in the workshop to just consider the, the cladding weight and the self weight. It's okay for us, I guess. Gravity and cladding. We are about uh, out of time. Yeah. Right? So what does this show me here? This, because I have exactly on, right on this ring here, um, darker bars. And blue, blue is tension. So it's, a, it's, a, it's a behavior uh, that's characteristic, it's a signature of domes, that some rings of this, it's a kind of belt that's trying to, the, the, the dome is trying to open Okay, it's interesting. Okay. The and it's kind of working right as a belt. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's interesting because it's not the base, it's right above it. Yeah, but it's, 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 it's yeah, it, this is a, a, it's blue in the above one. You see? It's yeah. It's not darker, but it's a belt also. Mm hmm. Belt. Yeah. Uh, so just to check here. Um, so here I have my. Coeficiente de elasticidade, coeficiente de poação. Uh, here, specific weight is densidade. Uh, but you have to divide this. No, no. No, it's okay. Is that? It's okay. Uh, specific weight is densidade. Not actually, because density is related to mass and kilos and specific weight it's uh weight weight is not actually the same thing of mass because you have the gravity acceleration between them so it's basically specific yes okay and then yield strength is more like resistance or not yeah yeah okay then we're good okay ah. And right. just one on one in two days. Yeah. So <laughs> let's start the final presentation. Ooh. <laughs> uh, and we start with who? Who wants to start it? I still have to <laughs> I will visit you. Uh, maybe I can uh, start. Just give me uh, one minute because I need to. Uh, I'm, I've been working on a different computer, so I'm just going to join the 
the the session from that computer if you okay no problem enter um, Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. I guess I can. Cool. Uh, so my idea was to actually just start with um, uh, with the surface, uh, and then go from that from there and uh, apply a couple of tessellation methods, and uh, and see just to play a little bit with the optimization goals and see which uh, what what can I do with it? What kind of information can I extract? So I I really didn't have a clear optimization goal, rather just playing with the code and trying to see what kind of uh, information I can uh, extract from the option you're in. So, um, uh, uh, so, so if you, uh, so what I did here is I, uh, my, my, the first step was just to, to go with lunchbox and do some really simple uh, tessellation. So all the surfaces are the same size, they are 10 meter by 10 meter and I applied uh, different triangular uh, tessellation. And I did the, um, what I did pretty much is just uh, you adapted the, uh, the definition that we've been given. And I ran the uh, optimization or the, the form finding. Uh, I tried to limit the, the, the height. So my, one of the parameters that I was using to, uh, to, for the simulation is actually the height. So the, the height of the, the thing. So I limited between 3.5 to 6 meter height. And here is the human for scale. Uh, and here uh, you can see the, uh, the utilization of the, the three different, uh, the three different uh, tessellations. So uh, this is tessellation number one, uh, tessellation number two, and tessellation number three. Uh, you can see that uh, it actually quite goes around my edges. I'll leave my mouse. Oops. Uh, I don't know why that happened because I didn't screenshot the, the tessellation. But the, well, oh, come on. Of course, it's live demo syndrome. Um, but, but yeah, so uh, looking at maybe at just the, the, the Excel sheet, what I actually I was able to, or maybe I'll show you what I was actually optimizing for. So uh, what I was optimizing for is actually changed this uh, this uh, this um, uh, data that I love. I was looking specifically at the mass, the length, which is how my, how much raw material we need. Uh, the of course the structure height and the dimension of the um, of the cross section. And I, I had two parameters for the optimization. I had the, the of course the height of the of the structure. And also going through the uh, rectangular uh, tube catalog. Uh, so the results for the the first uh, for the first uh, uh, one maybe I'll just do like this so that you can remember which one is which. Uh, so the results for the first one were as follow. Uh, how do I make it to this? Okay. Anyway, uh, I'll just go and then show you here. So the results uh, were like this. So for the first one, oh, it's crashing again, I'm sorry. I'll just show you on the Excel. Uh, for the first one, I got all the data and I've been trying to uh, come up with some combo. So here I'm just looking at the height, relation between the height and the length, the height and the mass and the section. 
I would say all the results that I got are very expected. Uh, of course, if you go higher, you need more material and you need more, uh, and the, your uh, structure will be heavier. But what was nice for me is to see this kind of what is the maximum actually height that I can go and how much material I would need. Uh, and uh, and uh, for that, I was. Uh, uh, for the second one, as you can see here, I would I would need for the a maximum height of six meter, I would need 415 raw material. For this one, I would for similar results, I would need 500. Uh, similar results for the for the mass. Uh, so uh, for you can see that the, the for six meter, I mean, you can get away with uh, 10 tons uh, with specific sections and. The, the second option and the first option with where most of the, 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 the iterations were toward the start. Uh, my conclusion would be that without any surprise, the, the, the first, uh, that the first, uh, uh, the first one is the, the, the better option. So that's the, would be the one on the, on the right, of course, because it has less uh, less, uh, less tessellation or less material. Uh, but it was always nice to see the results uh, visually and then, uh, and then actually get some number uh, behind it. Uh, I think the, uh, my next step would be to, to go a little bit here and, uh, and record more, uh, more uh, results about the structure because I think the mass and the structure height are not really significant. Uh, so I would also try to maybe to add a little bit more login here, look at the cross section, look at the loads, because here I just kept the, the default load, maybe uh, uh, gravity and uh, default load. So, so yeah, that's, that's what I've been able to do to, today. Very good. Congratulations. I, Thank you. I like a lot. Is that it? It 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 has window to to expand, of course, but for for two days of workshop, I guess it was amazing. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you. So, where is it now? I will try. Okay, please. So. First, I will so I start with the oh, come on, with just uh, this point, and I want to create um, a structure uh, like a refuge structure and optimize it to use the less material in, to support. Uh, it's like a roof, it's not uh, uh, to step on. So um, with this point, I start to create um, uh, some other points to generate the frame. So I generate this uh, this uh, triangle frame, just a, a simple one. Then I um, I give it uh, well. I divide it in segments, and I rotate the 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 frame. I made a copy and rotate the frame seven times, and to leave one one open uh, part for for an entrance or something like that. So um, then I run the the Corumba plugin, so I can generate different models uh, with uh, different uh, distances and heights. I limit the heights and the distances uh, for some meters only. So I have 
maximum of, of four meters high and 2.5 is the lowest height. Um, yeah, so when I run Galapagos, it sends me a lot of uh, um, different types of, uh, of uh, results. And the one that was, was more optimized is this one. And I will let me. Turn it off. This one was the most optimized. And yeah, I think maybe the, the next step would be um, maybe generate another, um, like a more complex frame, maybe. So I can use uh, less wood, like smaller. Uh, Diameter or meters in the um, in the cross cross cross. I forgot the word, but in all the cross section, in the cross section. Yes, thanks. In the cross section, so maybe with less cross, smaller cross section, I can and using like more more triangles in this frame, uh, it would be nicer and optimized. Yeah, it's a simple, simple refuge. Okay, it's very good. Very good. Congratulations, Martin. Thank you. Uh, who is it now? Volunteers. I can present my my own, but I haven't achieved nothing special exactly. Go ahead. Basically, I was like trying to solve that that thing we I showed you earlier, and uh, I haven't succeeded on it. Just a moment. So on on this model, which was the one that I had to to get the, the normals, I just added the vectors to it. I think it's working, right? Absolutely. Uh, Actually, no. I, I think I forgot to uh, to pull the normals. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'll have to check it later. Because I was comparing this one with your shell from finding. And the normal should get to the list. Yeah, yeah you have to, to, to look at the number of elements that is nodes and bars mm -hmm. because you, you need one vector for each bar. So the trick is... Yeah, so I have to add, add a few. I'll have to, to work better on it. And, and also, well, well I guess the, the this ending part also is not working well because of that. Mm. Uh, I tried raising a lot the, the measure of my beams, but still the stress and the displacement values are huge. Mm. Also, maybe because I haven't uh, completed all with the with the bamboo values we were looking after. I, I had to, to find some material first yeah which 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 is the length of your span depends <laughs> i haven't measured it 
it seems to be very, very big. Yeah. Like, I think maybe this is the biggest span, 20 meters. Yeah, 20 meters is something. So, uh, you have to, to, to be aware about the span. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, about the, 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 the numbers that is the properties of the material mm -hmm. because it's, it's, it's very important to for the results yeah so I, right now I'm like using this the wood one but I guess if I just swap it for for the steel one it wouldn't be that much of a problem right but yes yeah so I, I kind of messed up here I tried to add some notes while uh, not I was not watching. not necessarily because uh, steel is very more more stiff than wood mm -hmm. and we can say that this shape maybe it's more suitable mm -hmm. for bars made by steel okay okay because this is one of one of the discoveries that the shape and the material and the cross-section shape and size compatibility mm -hmm. right so yeah. experimenting uh, span size and everything you can find out yeah okay then um... And I have some other, this stuff I was doing like earlier, before the class, but what I wanted to ask you, if I have some time. In the end, I kind of, not proud of it, but I drew this, uh, these curves. I took them and rebuilt them by hand. And I'm starting from, from this, these lines that I exploded and took the segments and so I tried just to plug in to continue from your definition mm -hmm. but I but I and then I added this these four points and as the support but then there's a message here that says that uh, this node <clears throat> number zero they it can't find it. Yeah, because uh, the node is not there. Yeah, I mean, but it, why not? What does it mean that it's not there? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I'll have the, to. The message is this. Okay. Because maybe because you 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 did it manually, something mm -hmm. can. Uh, Produce some difficulty. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. You have to check it more carefully. Okay. Yeah. Maybe it's that. But it said, yeah, exactly. The point written here is the same that says it's missing. So I'll try to, in a different way, figure this out. Yeah. Like I said. The geometry generation is the key for almost everything. Mm -hmm. you, you, you have noticed about it. This is this is this is the key. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. Um, who is it now? Hello. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So my I thought of uh, making a pavilion kind of structure, something like this known as uh, hyperbolic 
parabolite. So my first step is to parameterize everything in the grasshopper. So what I did is uh, I was able to give the flexibility of changing the span of the structure and uh, also the height of the structure and was able to take the column beam as line data and uh, uh, the slab surface as mesh so, and followed by that I started to assign all the loads, supports and all those things like everyone did and the next step was to run the optimization and I went for the material concrete and uh, so, so after running the optimization, uh, before it, all uh, the valuations were like one digit, somewhere like six, seven or something. And now I guess it's in pretty good numbers. I was able to achieve 94 and all. Yeah. So followed by that also the important part is I was able to achieve the maximum span of eight meter. So, and also, this is how my structure looks right now. So, this is with the displacement and cross sectional tension. And this was the final result I was able to achieve. And I think maybe the next step would be. As uh, Philip said, uh, the longer columns I need to specify into different cross-sectional area and material, and I will try to run the optimization again. Yeah. Very good, Srinas. Congrats. Thanks. Thanks. Credits to you, Philip. Thank you. Uh, Lisa? Uh, yeah, not much also. <laughs> like, I wanted to do more. I um, took a bit more to, a bit longer to find all the specifications for my material that I wanted to use in the project. But um, here I tried to apply the structural analysis to a geodesic dome that I'm working on. And here, what I really found uh, very useful that I'm definitely going to apply is being able to actually get the catalog of the material that I'll use and then be able to um, vary it here depending on what's actually available. Um, so here, um, as you can see, you have a, a belt around the bottom here, which is where you get uh, more tension trying to hold it, um, the structure together. And also, what I've noticed is like if I if I decrease here the my the cross section that I use, then I have a higher um, where is it a higher buckling. Buckling susceptibility. So it would be more ideal for me to use, for example, a 10 by 5 cross section. And then I have a much more secure structure. But I do want to evolve this code and then add more types of loads, like the, the wind that you just mentioned, and then also um, try to apply. Uh, Galapagos to find what which is the best cross section here for me to use, and that's it. And now I was trying to do that um, the cladding portion of it to see if it worked. And yeah, I believe it's about that. Look, I have a 1.12 factor, and we applied 0.1 here, so it's about the same right? Yeah, great. Also, I noticed that because you said that um, I had to use um, like half of six triangles, but I do have 
um, a few nodes that are inside a pentagon, but it's better to consider it being um, it's better to consider six triangles inside of five for security. Yes, it will be the worst case. The be okay. the, the, the the better situation is to collect the influence influential area, a tributary area of each node, and you have the, the, the area for each node, actually. But it's very good that oh, okay. what you want to your shields, uh, because the way it is it. Okay? Okay, so I'll have to do the strike. Mm. Okay, I don't know how I would do that to identify the area of, infl of influence of each node like that. Okay, may maybe I have an idea. Maybe if I try to select the closest um, triangles near to each node and then I'll take Exactly, the exactly, exactly. Yeah, okay. And you can make a surface and extract the area. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, you can also eliminate some uh, bars to to construct an opening. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's we definitely have. Thing. Yeah, we definitely have those, especially here for the entrance. Yeah. Exactly. Or maybe uh, for the openings. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Very nice. Congrats for you. It's a very nice project. It's a little bit more uh, energy on it. And yeah. you can uh, optimize and construct. <laughs> and send to us the photos. Okay. Uh, Mirella, I guess you, you have something for us? Uh, Enrique saved me <laughs> yeah. and helped me. Uh, but uh, we we have some doubts about the the geometric generation. No, the the, the information about uh, bamboo to put it in the the definition. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, um, I I have uh, the the number, but uh, uh, I I think we we have doubts if we put it in the the. The right uh, uh, input. Yes. <laughs> um, I um, if he um, can I uh, show you the the table that I I have. If you say if I I choose some information. The, yeah, I can help you all uh, further by email. If you, okay, if you need. okay, okay. Thank you, <laughs> because uh, I I have uh, a little time to to finish my. <laughs> okay, no problem. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Vibhav, uh, did you did you design something, and do you want to present for us? Uh, hello, so I, I have a, a really bad fortune of power cut and not being able to follow up with the workshop. I just uh, joined like uh, 20 minutes back. So I've been quite unlucky. Okay, not no problem. Uh, really sorry, so. No problem. Uh, so, everybody presented, yes? So I want to hear you. We have 11 minutes. If you want to, to do a statement or something, uh, how about was the, the workshop? And you can, you can do so if you want. Anyone? Yeah, I want to say a few words very quickly, though. I, uh, the workshop was very, very nice. I enjoyed it a lot, and I want to congratulate also the the other students. We had so like 
little time and they develop quite nice studies. Um, so the next workshop I'll look, I'll try to do the same <laughs> focus on presenting because it was really cool. I, are you, I really liked your work and, and I wanna see Lisa's dome afterwards. That's it. Thank you, Henrique. You live in Brazil, you can come and visit. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I, I would like to visit as well, but it's a little bit complicated right now, isn't it? Uh, maybe next year. <laughs> maybe ne next year, yeah. Uh, the, uh, um, well, first of all, thanks a lot for the workshop. I, I, I really liked it. I liked the, the example code that was provided. It was, was really helpful also how we went uh, through it uh, at the beginning uh maybe if uh if i had to wish for something for the the next workshop maybe just a very brief introduction at the start about some structure properties some numbers because i mean i i sat yesterday and i had to look for them myself and but i would have appreciate hearing you uh, explaining them because you you have a really good method of simplifying things so I would like to see you trying to simplify it because for somebody who doesn't have necessarily a structural engineering uh, background uh, other than that I, I, uh, I really liked what uh, the others are doing given the, the very limited time and I hope to see you all in another occasion in a workshop maybe yeah thanks Thank you, uh, thank you for, for for the tips. It's very helpful. I will try to improve in the, in the next workshop. Actually, it's the first workshop that I I, I give. Oh, it was really uh, cool. Congratulations! Uh, <laughs> it was a good one. Yeah, nice to hear you. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Uh, Maybe we can have the double like four days workshop next time instead yeah. of two. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyone else? Congratulations, Felipe. Uh, I like it so much, but uh, uh, I, I may I don't want to invent it because I, I don't know to to use the grasshopper. But uh, I I understand the the concept and a little bit of theory that you you explained yesterday about the. How the 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 caramba think what you need to do, and uh, it's it's, it's uh, uh, very important to me to, to write uh, about the the, the models uh, that Enrique is uh, doing for me, and uh, congratulations to the the colleagues about the, the good job. <laughs> Only two days to do, <laughs> it's so hard. And uh, uh, I I hope that the the next workshop I I can do anything myself. <laughs> and thank you for your help. Thank you so much. Yeah, for me, I definitely felt um, the gap between architecture and engineering uh, like that that took me a while to get it and I mean I still feel like it's I'm still um, very at uh, a superficial knowledge of it but I do want to deepen um, my caramba experiences yeah um yeah but it was really nice it's actually my first uh, zoom workshop. Um, and although we are all all far apart in in many um, different places across the world, it, it did grow, it did feel like we grew we grew um, closer together, like struggling with it. And I don't know. Let's let's try and meet in our in my in my Brazilian geodesic dome, and then we can all <laughs> meet in person, perhaps. Thank you, Lisa. Very nice. I also want to say thanks to, to 
to Felipe and to everyone. Uh, I think the workshop uh, results were very good. Um, I'm very happy. Uh, at the beginning, I thought like it's 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 gonna be very very early, <laughs> and I'm gonna think uh, that early in the morning. But the results were, were very good, and the the lessons and the um, the the, the um, like the class that you that you give us was very very good and um, yeah I think it's, it's, it's very very good uh, workshop so congratulations to everybody and thank you thank you Martin uh, silly enough it was a great workshop trip and uh, I got to learn many things from Karamba and especially the optimization part which is something I'm doing for the first time so I think it's really great what I will be doing is after this workshop I'll start putting the optimization I'm gonna watch it till, till the night the morphing part is really good there, you know and thank you everyone like everyone was great and I can't believe it's your first workshop actually it was pretty good you did good oh thank you you, you conveyed very well you know? Nice, thank you so much. So I would like just to cheers to the camera so I can make a picture. <laughs> nice, shiny, happy people. <laughs> and uh, I want to thank you so much, my new international friends. And uh, they come um, count on me if you want to discuss something and uh, with about research or design or something. I will, um, I will do my best to help you, and uh, it will be a pleasure to do it. So thank you so much for your audience, for your uh, um, stamina to push forward to learn and uh, and uh, your curiosity it was very 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 nice yes i will share, share uh, the contacts of everyone right and the next mayo and that's it it was a lot uh, uh experience i guess uh, learn